Let me tell a tale of a world where heroes walk among us, fighting through the darkness left by monsters and by selfish men. A tale of glory rents us under sacrifice and battles lost. Our heroes know not what awaits them and still they carry Hello, hello, everybody. How are we doing this lovely Friday the 13th, this fine evening? Uh, my name is Pixel, and we are Ages of Einor, and welcome to the Necromagical, the Deathtastic fifth episode of Ages of Einor Presents The Region of Bedegar. <clears throat> we are back once again, of course, with our bevy of Bedegarian adventurers, and we are super excited for this next episode of the follow up campaign to the Siege of Castle Rend. If you've missed the Siege of Castle Rend and you're jumping in halfway through this, campaign don't worry uh stick around and enjoy the show uh but you can also go see our past episodes on our youtube page where they are separated by playlists for each campaign we have a lot of stuff out there for you to watch um and uh we think you'll enjoy it so uh but you don't have to have watched that for this to make sense it should be moderately self-contained um and the illusion should make sense in context um i will be your dungeon master for this evening for this adventure which is found in the dd 5e supplement kingdoms and warfare by mcdm and both the adventure and the book are follow-up to their first book, Strongholds and Followers. Um, and so this adventure is the follow-up to the adventure from that book. As always, we're going to get into the game here in just a few moments. But before we do, we're going to go through our usual nonsense plus a couple of other things. Uh, first things first, for folks in chat, try to remember when we move on to map screens in the stream that what you are seeing is the DM perspective. So you may see things on my screen that the players don't see, although I don't think that's going to happen a lot this time, so I won't uh, belabor the point. But People may be hanging out in chat, try not to spoil anything, is the long and short of it. Secondly, um, and by people, I mean the players in the game, of course. Uh, secondly, please remember, D&D is a complex game with a lot of rules, and we're improvising a story together as a group, so we may, may play fast and loose with the rules. I may change things in the adventure, and all sorts of stuff like that. Um, don't try not to lose your mind about it. Uh, I may, you know, make stuff up and change calls and stuff like that. Uh, if we're trying to remember how a rule works and you know how it works and we're like sitting here racking our brains about it, you can feel free to try and type that in chat. And if we see it, we will use it. But of course, uh, if we screw it up and move on, don't lose your mind about it. Um, we're not going to go back and fix it. We'll just try to get it right in the future. Thirdly, as always, we do want to keep this space as open and welcoming a place as we can to the extent that that's possible on the internet. <clears throat> so we do try to keep that internet toxicity to a minimum. So, uh, no being hateful to uh, or abusive to anyone in chat, whether that's other viewers just watching along with you and commenting, or to players on the stream, whether that's about their character, their them themselves, anything with the name, not name, the knowledge of the game or the rules, uh, anything else. Uh, I doubt that that's kind of be going to be a problem, but we do try to be upfront with that stuff, uh, so you guys know what type of dynamic we're trying to foster here. <clears throat> and uh, a reminder, as I said before, we do release the show on our YouTube uh, about. Wednesday after the episode airs on Friday, it usually goes up, and uh, it also goes up on our podcast as well, uh, and you can get access to it early uh, via the Patreon on in both podcast and YouTube form if that's something you're interested in. Uh, mostly that's for just wanting to support the show, but uh, you do get a fun little perk if you like to watch it on the weekend if you can't watch it live. Um, and then the last thing I want to do before we jump into everyone reminding them who reminding you all who they are and who their characters and if they have inspiration, all that, I do want to briefly touch on the, um, OGL situation, um, because it's constantly changing and somewhat relevant to what we do here. So, uh, if you don't know, and most of you should at this point, <clears throat> the OGL is the open gaming license. It came out in the nineties with the third edition of D and D and was basically a tool that allowed companies and people other than wizards of the coast to make content for uh dungeons and dragons as a game and wizards of the coast didn't like monetize that didn't have really any say in what other people published there were certain parts of the rule set that were still proprietary they didn't release the entire game just as anyone could do anything with any part of it 
Um, but like they had like a standard rules, the SRD thing that they released, and you could use any of that stuff um, to make either additional add-on content or spin it off into your own stuff, um, which is kind of wild, And but was actually one of the things that led to a lot of the success of 3rd Edition and 3.5 was this huge amount of content that was coming out from a whole lot of third-party publishers. Fast forward um, to now... They're coming up with a new edition of the game, and of course now we have phenomena like streaming shows and Critical Role, you know, um, and Dimension 20 and these other big kind of IPs that are using Dungeons & Dragons as a platform and making a bunch of money doing it, um, as well as large companies like Paizo, who split off to do their own thing uh, with Pathfinder when the fourth edition of the game came out for offering alternatives to folks who wanted to play something more similar to third edition. Um, as well as companies like uh, Cobalt Press and MCDM, who are putting out pretty big competitive books, you know, um, to D and D. So now that there's a new edition of the game coming out called One D and D, um, we see that uh, basically the higher ups at Hasbro have decided that they think they could monetize D and D more, largely I think because they don't understand anything about the community at large or the game itself <laughs> um and so they wanted to revise the ogl and um basically ch change all of that um and so th there were a lot of questions uh last week when we talked about this it wasn't even clear that like streaming shows would be able to continue and some things there has been a new um release put out by them um that kind of goes over the, a lot of the backlash basically uh, I think most of their justifications are are lies. I don't think that that's actually really why they're doing any of this. I think they're doing it because it's a financial decision by, you know, a capitalist corporation uh, trying to make the biggest bottom line possible. And they're shifting on things because it looks like it will make their bottom line smaller rather than the bigger. And that's the only thing they care about. Um, but it does look like streaming shows like this one will basically be able to continue um, without any problems although uh, we still probably are planning to switch systems once i wrap up these two campaigns that i'm doing but it does mean that we will for sure be able to finish the campaigns that we're currently doing which is the good news for you guys if you're enjoying these things um and then i, I made a kind of a tiktok about the rest of it several other companies are coming out with new games mcdm and cobalt press paizo is putting out their new open gaming license that is actually going to be not only you know open uh, for other companies to use, but have language indicating that they uh, that it's irrevocable and can't be changed for the future. Sort of more along the lines of what Linux and the Linux Foundation is, as opposed to something like the OGL. Uh, and then Wizards came out with a statement saying that they, oh, we're not going to do a bunch of the more horrible stuff we were going to do, and we really wanted to do this in the first place because we didn't want people be, to be able to use the OGL to like publish hateful or bigoted stuff, and we were worried about like NFTs and basically, and then the they sneak in right at the end that, it, that they know, oh, and these other companies are using it. Long story short, uh, it looks like the internet backlash has caused them to retract on some things. But, you know, I, I still think it would be better for the community if we spread out among different games and one company didn't have all the power to, you know, make huge sweeping changes to, like, hobbies as well as people's livelihoods. So, um, long story short, we're going to continue to play 5e for the future until we finish up these campaigns and then we'll see what happens. Um, so I made a TikTok about it as well as so did many other people. If you have further questions, hit us up in the discord or TikTok. I don't want to rant about this anymore, but <laughs> that's the long and short of it. Um, these shows will continue and then we'll see where we go from there. Um, so that all having been said before we get started, I'd like us to go around and cast. If you would please introduce yourselves and your characters and remind folks as to whether or not you have chat inspiration. So, uh, Bonus Mom. Hi, I am Bonus Mom, and I am playing Perdita, the Tabaxi Rogue. And I do have uh, inspiration, chat inspiration, and actually, I have DM inspiration. So, thank you so very much, dear sweet DM. You can find me all over the internet. I'm everywhere. Uh, and I agree with everything Pixel said, and I will just add that his TikTok is on Ages of Einor, if you are looking for it on TikTok. Huzzah. Uh, Kyla. 
Hey pals, super, super happy to be back playing D&D with my friends. Um, so I'm Kyla, I'm playing Shanti, who's our water genasi uh, bard and druid. And uh, I am lacking chatspiration at the moment. Thanks for being here. Very good. Uh, Daniel. Hey guys, I'm Daniel. It's good to be back playing uh, D and D with uh, these fine, uh, wonderful people. And uh, I'm playing Solomon. I am lacking chat inspiration, but uh, let's see where this goes. Very good, Beast. Hello, everyone. I am Beast. Uh, I play Raz Hiskers, the Tabaxi Valor Bard, and I am fully inspired. Don't inspire me. Save it for someone else. I'm good. Move on to the next one. Excellent. Uh, Jesse. Hey, 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 everyone. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I am glad to be back. I am Jesse, and I am fully inspired, so thank you. In lieu of promoting myself this week, I thought I would share a little limerick uh, that has been floating through my mind. So if you will indulge me. I'm very tired, and this week has been hell. And all that I want is a good OGL. I've heard all the bull from the Hasbro gizzards. And I've seen all the lies from the coastal wizards. So just let us play our silly game without loot boxes or paywalls or other such shame. Just leave us alone and don't be clowns. Or I promise you this community will tear you down. Thank you very Amen. much. Amen. <laughs> Woohoo! Oh, well done. And Ten that is me. Done. I am fully inspired. Thank You're you here. very much. But uh, not only yeah. inspired, but an inspiration to us all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and of course, Taylor. Hey, friends, I'm Taylor. I play Anna and that was beautiful, Jesse. Thank you so much. So I'm so happy to be back. I'm ready to play. Let's do this. Excellent. And uh, Taylor, does Anna have inspiration from chat? Oh, I do not have chat inspiration. Thank you. Beautiful. Uh, folks, and uh, of course, as always, I am Pixel, your, um, I don't know, illustrious GM, lustrous GM, lustrous GM, lame GM, whatever, it's fine. Uh, I um, run the games mostly here at Ages of Einor, um, and we are currently running two campaigns, this one on this week, which I don't have to tell you about because you're here, uh, and then next week we'll be resuming The Curse of Strahd, in which I uh, emotionally torment our players for uh, my own and your amusement. Uh, within, of course, largely the bounce that they've set up during our con consent conversations during session zero and numerous check-ins that we have. However, um, it's a good time. You should definitely check it out. Uh, that will be next week, the 20th. Um, and we alternate games back and forth every Friday. So uh, those episodes are up on our YouTube as well. If you are hearing this for the first time and think that would be fun and want to be caught up, uh, you have like a week to uh, to get caught up. Anyway. All that having been said, I also uh, do stream on Twitch here on my second channel, which is weird. I have two channels. I like to keep the streams separate on them, but uh, I stream video games. We've currently been playing Breath of the Wild, although we did a little stint in Coder. I've, I might do some Elden Ring, but there's a lot of stuff we do over there. Um, we'll probably play Jedi Fallen Order before the new Star Wars comes out. There's a lot of things we'll do, So, uh, but you can hear me do that. Also, if you want to talk more about the OGL, uh, I will speak about that probably ad nauseum over there if you prompt me so uh show up to one of those streams and we can make that happen um and then uh finally of course as we begin when last we left our heroes they stand in the tower of caliga lifebane the necromancer far in the southwest corner of Bedegar lies the tower, formerly surrounded by a hustling and bustling town, now only the site of death and despair. They have been locked in preparations for a struggle against the usurper, Saxton, who had, through treachery, slain the previous uh, rulers uh, of Bedegar, the Bedegar family, all except for young Edmund Bedegar, who was kidnapped by the orcs who had been hired to kill his family uh, in cahoots with uh, Saxon. And uh, they adventured, they 
found Saxton. They repelled an invasion on the ruins of the castle in the forest, Castle Rend. And then uh, months had passed as the two groups began to consolidate power. And now that um, spring going into summer is on the horizon, it is time for the lead up to war. And they have spent several weeks now uh, working on building their relationships with other groups in the area. They have petitioned the Baron to the north, the Baron of Dalrath, for his aid, and have been granted it. They have aided the Thieves' Guild in the area, the Clock, in extricating their Thieves' Guild leader, Zola Honeycutt, from having been captured by Lord uh, Saxton in Bedegar City. And uh, she has promised her aid as well. And I believe they have received some aid from the uh, Tabaxi mercenaries that uh, Roz has been putting together for the last few months. And um, I've, there's one more. What did Perdita get? The orcs. And the orcs. That's right. And the orcs, who they actually had formed a relationship with following the events of Siege of Castle Rend, uh, have thrown their lot in with the players as well. Uh, so, all of that having been done, they had, through the intelligence report given to them by the clock, understood that the necromancer is believed to be in league with Saxon, and they thought perhaps they could deny him a powerful ally by taking him on. So they made their way to the town around the necromancer's tower. Also, several people are granting each other inspiration. I think everybody's all inspired up. Um, I just... <laughs> No. <laughs> wanted to make sure everyone saw this. Um, they made their way to the town around the tower, uh, had several clever uses of magic using, I believe, uh, Charlie and Shanty. Uh, Shanty wild shaping into a bird, Charlie, of course, being a bird, Silas is familiar, uh, to investigate much of the town and help them navigate through all the way to the tower without actually running into, um, I don't think, any combat at all, did you? I think you fully passed all those checks. Uh, and they made their way to the tower, where things got a little messy. Uh, they went in the front door, they went in the side wall, they alerted some armor, beat the shit out of it, went onto the second floor, killed a rug, found some treasure. Meanwhile, of course, <laughs> alerting everyone upstairs to their presence. Uh, and now, of course, we resume our story there. So they uh, split up. This tower has is crumbling and falling apart. So the two tabaxi, with their excellent climbing skills, went out one of the holes in the second floor and climbed up to attack from the hole in the third floor. And the others went up the stairs only, of course, to find uh, that two powerful undead and Calica lifebane awaited them. And that, my friends, is where we are going to pick up. So I need to put on. Here we go. On a little battle music here, and switches over to the map, and uh, try to get everybody in here if I can. Okay, uh, and we so we had rolled initiative last time. It looks like as we jump into combat, I don't think anyone was surprised. You guys knew they were there; they knew you were there. So this is purely initiative. Um, Roz, you are the first to act as you begin to climb up the outside. I think you guys are maybe, I'm going to say, 10 feet down the wall still, climbing up towards. And you can see in the hole where you intend to go, uh, there is a creature sort of like looking down at you preparing to fight. Uh, what would you like I to do? I cannot see the map. Sorry. Cannot see the map. It's black. Okay. So I, must have... I couldn't oh, see it either, and then I just scrolled the down. Yeah, oh, yeah, wait, hang on. It's a huge map. Did you that drag be... everyone's vision to where we are? Okay, yeah, bottom left. Okay, so Roz, you are up first. You are climbing up next to Perdita, and you see this creature staring and looking over the edge of the wall. What would you like to do? Uh, Roz, clinging to the wall, uh, uh, says to Perdita... Perdita, you must go ahead. Remember, ignore distractions. Strike at the head. We must be decisive. And gives you bardic inspiration. Uh, climbs up swiftly uh, uh, to attempt to be in melee with the, the, the demon spawn, the uh, uh, vampire spawn, right? Is it, yes. that what we're, go we're looking at? And uh, 
can Roz uh, be like on the ledge or is she still like clinging to? Yeah. So I think, um, I think this is an odd scenario. So I'm going to do some wacky stuff. There is room that you can get up there, but it is precarious. Um, So I think if you try to climb up to actually be standing next to this creature, uh, I am going to grant it an attack of opportunity. Please. Um, (gasps) Oh, no, we lost someone. Oh, no. Oh, no. Who did we lose? Taylor. Anna. Uh Uh-oh. Sweet, sweet Anna. Rip, guys. (laughs) Just as it's kind of like last time, just as things are getting good. We're having technical problems. Oh, she said that her net is spotty. Oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. Well, all of our faces in are in various... Hello, everyone. All of our faces are in weird places in the boxes because, of course, we're... Uh, when it's, it's very specific to where on the screen we are. Um, I did swap out... Do I have a full map screen? Oh, yikes. All around me are familiar. Okay. <laughs> All right, I'm going to go to just the regular. I'm going to go to the full zoom. Um, and then. You don't need to see us, folks. Let Let's focus actually, on the action. Uh, do Okay. Well, and while he is doing that, I don't think that we did all get fully inspired. Is that right? Uh, uh, correct. Our paladin is not inspired. And okay. our. Uh, uh, whose name I have forgotten is not inspired. Our leader, our honorable leader, is Silas. Not inspired. Silas. Inspired. Silas. Silas is not inspired. I am fully inspired. Oh, you are. Well, yeah, oh, I'm, Anna. I'm is it up. no Anna? Girl. Maybe it's just. Is it just Solomon? Is the only one? Oh. Yeah, I would. However, I would be generous to trade in the chance to be inspired and be hasty. You just wait, buddy. You okay. want? Do you want Roz to cast haste? All right, guys. So we're gonna hang out for yeah, just I think a Roz's second here. A weird. <laughs> I'm gonna put us okay, back okay. on the Zoom screen. Okay, I have a question, Monsieur Le DM. Yes. Remind me that body on the table, which I know Perdita can't even see, but I think you described it. But what is it? Is it a live person or a villager? Or a I don't believe you know yet. Oh, okay. You and have I don't not think you can see it. it. Uh, yeah, it's there. Um, and I don't think any of you know quite what to make of it yet. I, I think we okay. may have Taylor back. Okay. Can y'all hear me okay? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yep, yep. Sorry about that. That's okay. These things happen. <laughs> Uh, okay, cool. Well, um, so we were taking, we were jumping in as the vampire spawn is taking an attack at um, Roz, who I think it's got to be a claw attack. Um, ooh, I got twenty to hit. That hits. Okay, Roz, you take ten slashing damage Whoa. as this thing just sort of like slashes down at you. Uh, it's not going to yeah. grapple you because it probably is going to wait till you actually get up to grapple uh, and try and bite you and it, all that stuff. So this time it's just trying to, to soften you up um, and that you're still up. So you can get up to here, basically. Uh, you can awesome. sort of squeeze into that space beside this thing. It's a little tight, uh, but there is room for you there. That's perfect. Uh, I'm going to need a 20-foot radius, 40 diameter circle, please. Okay. 20-foot radius, 40 diameter circle. Mm. <laughs> oh shit! Uh, <laughs> let's see. That's my uh, DM left for anyone. Okay. Um, I don't know it. which thing you're doing here. Roz is casting silence. Silence. Okay. Because I do she actually have a soft purr. different <sighs> things for that. The- okay. Uh, the the, uh, chesty purr uh, that Roz is constantly generating now is is rarefying the air around her. There is silence. You can put that wherever you wish. Right about Mm, about there, I think. Um, Okay. Um, What level spell is silence? Silence is a Level two spell. Okay, uh, Kaliga is going to counterspell your silence. 
All right, that's one down. That's one down, folks. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, shit. Oh, uh-oh. Counterspell. Oh, oh. oh, and so Silas oh. is going to counterspell the counterspell. <laughs> you can have it back. Okay, uh, yeah, so as you begin to uh, cast Silence, Kalaga uh, turns to you and says, mm, I think not, and snaps her fingers, and the spell begins to fizzle. And then Silas puts on sunglasses. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, so Silas, what does it look like as you cast this counter spell? I think that Kaliga looks to her fingers and l- literally there's no sound coming out of it. She looks at it and you just see Silas over there with a wand just kind of like looking at her and taking a bow. <laughs> and then she just like starts like, <laughs> you know, kind of like raging a little bit in her silence uh okay ross so that is i think your action and you have burned up her reaction and uh, uh, maybe locked down the spellcaster to some extent uh ross used her bonus action to grant inspiration to uh perdita uh <laughs> she has used the amount of movement that she would like and she will simply end her turn by saying Madam Lifebane, may i introduce count silas of black hand and she just sort of like points at her ears and it's like. <laughs> <laughs> and that's Roz. Okay. Uh, very good. Silas, that brings us to you. Wand out, counterspell, having counterspelled. Uh, yep. So with that, I'm going to use my bonus action to start the blade song. Okay. Um, so yeah, along with the, the purring from... Uh, <clears throat> Roz, you hear this like just metallic as I wipe across it, and I'm going to move opposite Solomon, slap him on the ass as I go, touch him on the forehead, and cast haste. Okay, so Solomon, you are hasted. Uh, let's give you there's a little wing, and we'll give Silas a little wing to indicate that you have concentration on that. Okay. Uh, so you, I think that's your bonus action in action, yes? It is. I'm going to spin okay. my movement to try to get over here. Um, well, how, how how much did it take to move through Solomon? We're on a staircase, so does it matter? Um, the first five feet of the staircase is difficult to rain, okay. I think. Uh, but so That makes here 10. Moving through him four. is free. It's just that I think he's on the staircase the last bit, so it's still difficult to rain. Yeah. So. so you've gone that's 20 fine. feet so far, it looks like. Yeah, um, I think I'm actually going to stay where I am because I don't okay. want to be taking a bunch of hits for no reason. Okay, uh, that brings us to Perdita. Roz has climbed up, inspired you, taken a hit from this creature, <clears throat> and uh, done some sort of spell. Uh, what would you like to do? All right, well, I know where it looks like I am, but actually, where am I on the side of the building? You are about 10 feet down from that spot. But the, but Roz is standing busy. Is- in now adjacent to the person in the window. Yes. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you oh. can on the other side of it. You can fit into that spot there, uh, but it is you have a climb speed, so it's not difficult terrain. So it'll use ten feet of movement to get up, and then I guess it also would use half your movement or or fifteen feet standing up from prone as you get onto the ledge, which I should well, have had Roz do, but didn't really matter because Roz can't get out of that space anyway with that thing right, right there. So. And so- <clears throat> I am holding onto the side of the building, right? Yes, you are climbing right. up the side of the building. So so given that, then I am going to use my movement to climb up the side of the building into the opening. Um, and okay. so having having moved, I can't use uh, that thing that I use mm. that I get, ad- the, the bonus action that right. gives me, ad- I can't use that. Steady, but I can yeah. use sneak attack. And if I am moved directly beside that fellow then I am going to, uh, when I get in the ledge, even though, uh, well, I get in the ledge and I have, I, see, I, this is always confusing for me, okay? Probably uh-huh. not for Perdita, but, but for me. So does it count when I get in that ledge and I can see what's going on in the whole room? Or I yeah, got to go see what's with going what's on right in, in front of me? <clears throat> no, you can see what's going on in the room. Well, Roz told me to go to the head, but yet if I attack the guy in the window, I get the sneak attack. And so I feel like that I must do that on my very okay. first move. I'm going to whip out my bro- my short sword using sneak attack also, and I'm going to attack that person that is standing right there. 
And okay. that is a 26 to hit, Ooh. so I do not need my body hits. inspiration. Okay. And so I swipe at him with my short sword that I'm heaving uh, with my breath from coming up the mm -hmm. wall quickly. And I, uh, oh, did I, I think I accidentally yeah, he was hit, hit it twice. twice. But 15 and 9 is 24. Damn. Yes. And don't forget, Braz's Bardic Inspiration can also be used to roll extra damage or as a reaction to add to your armor class, kind of like the shield spell. And what happens if I add to my armor class? If How you're taking an well, if you're taking an attack, you can burn the Bardic Inspiration to give yourself bonus armor class. And if that is higher than the attack roll, the attack will miss you instead. All right. Yeah, and that's not every bard. That's because uh, Roz is a Valor bard. So. And what what do I roll now for you at seventh level? Level uh, D eight. But I don't need to do that right now, no. do I? No, nope. Just refreshing everyone's memory. All right. So now I'm looking at the room and I'm standing there bravely and I'm huffing and puffing. Okay. Uh, you've made your attack. Um, <clears throat> and Perdita, w what weapon? You have a regular short sword, right? Yes. Okay. I don't have anything amazing it is right. a regular short sword okay yeah so you uh you do notice it does seem this thing's hide is quite tough to cut um <clears throat> but uh you do land quite a solid hit that's the end of perdita that brings us to caliga um who i'm gonna make an arcana check for her hang on a second here yep that's right okay i'm gonna make an arcana check she probably is a high enough spellcaster to know what's been done here um <clears throat> and to understand what to do about it yeah i think that's high enough um okay <clears throat> excuse me and what is oh i know what she's gonna do she's going to take a step back she's gonna step out over here just outside the cone of silence Let's zoom out so you guys can see. <clears throat> and then she is going to do some nasty bullshit. Let's see. I got to find a template for this. Hang on, guys. <clears throat> All right. Let's see who she gets. Uh, you can see Caliga lining up a spell of some kind. Th uh able to move outside of the silence where's the okay it's the bermuda triangle Boop. that's a level 12 spell okay she is gonna hit one of her own people and she's not really gonna hit anna with this i don't think um not yeah she's not gonna hit anna with this uh but she is gonna cast cone of cold so, I need uh, Roz, one of the vampire spawn, Perdita, Silas, Solomon, Charlie, and Shanty to all make uh, constitution saving throws. DC. Me, me Shanty, and uh, Solomon 14. all get plus four to your save okay. throws. Very good. Uh, you're trying to beat a DC 14 here. So. Yeah. That is, Perdita gets a 19, that makes it. Uh, Shanti gets a 21, that makes it. I'm going to burn inspiration to grant myself advantage. Oh, that wasn't a saving throw. Whoops. Crap. Uh, okay, but we can add your bonus to that, right? So that's, so a... that's 14 plus 4, that's enough. Okay. Okay, so it looks like Roz fails. Does Silas get your bonus too? Uh, yes. Okay. Anybody within 10 feet of me gets a plus four to their saving throws. <clears throat> okay. All right. If you failed that, you take 46 you. points of cold damage as uh, as Caliga just blasts um, uh, this frigid energy out of her hands. You can see her uh, her sort of black and frostbitten fingernails. She doesn't even seem to notice uh, the pain of the cold that she's shooting out at you. Um, 
And if you succeeded, you only take 24 points of damage. Uh, the silence fades. Oof. Roz is down. Um, and sort of slumps back against the wall there. Um, unfortunately, I, I think that probably kills Charlie. I apologize. Charlie's Does... not technically out. I think you were using him as a lighting source. Oh, he's not out. Okay, cool, cool, cool. All right, yeah, very good. But whatever, it doesn't matter. No, that's fine. Right. Uh, if, if, yeah, and it, well, I guess you weren't using him. I was using him so you guys could see, so that's fine. Uh, so hmm. we'll say that Charlie is not out for this fight. I will uh, we'll just sort of put him over here in the corner. He can't uh, with anybody. Remind me again the rules of taking more than half of your hit points in one hit. Uh, so the insta death rules are if you take neg, like if you hit zero and the remaining damage mm. is your maximum hit points. So like if you had got it, got it. You know, twenty five <clears throat> hit points and you took fifty or fifty one hit points from a single attack, it would kill you outright. Or if you had five hit points and twenty five hit points total and you took 30 or 40 hit points from a single attack, it would make you so far in the negative that it's past your max HP. That insta-kills you. Um, the, as far as the half hit points thing, I think that's the thing they're doing in uh, the the most recent Dimension 20 season uh, as a sort of hardcore rule uh, gotcha. for taking exhaustion from, from big hits, so that's not something we have to worry about. <clears throat> uh, okay, so that uh, is... Does Jesse have to make a... Uh saving or a yes. uh, constitution <clears throat> or yeah. concentration. and if you took 23 points of damage that is going to be a dc 13 constitution save for haste dc uh, dc 11 23 is it half uh oh yeah, yeah 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 dc 11 you're right sorry yeah so um i have advantage because of warcaster and okay. a plus five because of the blade song okay so sorry just, no you're good Okay, 13. Safe. We make it. Okay. Good deal. Okay. Um, I think that's everything that Kalaga can do. Yes, it is. Okay. Pixel, super fast. How much damage did you say we took if we saved again? Was it 24? Uh, if you save, it is actually 23. I said the wrong thing. Oh. Four was just on okay. my mind. Uh, it was 23. No, no. I just want to make sure <laughs> I heard right. Thank you. Sorry. Yep. And uh, sh oh, and I need. I actually didn't Wait. make the save for the vampire spawn. Which Something happens that. when Roz hits zero hit points. That's an at point. So. Because Roz is still under the effect of the death ward granted in last season. <laughs> Holy shit. Roz has one hit point. Okay. Nice. God, oh Roz God. has never Amazing. gone down. Holy cow. Jeez. That's insane. Five lives left. For anyone at home keeping score. <laughs> That's funny. Amazing. <laughs> okay. Uh, so Roz has one hit point instead and is not down making death saves. And that brings us to Enna. Enna, you were on the stairs behind Shanty. Uh, this cone of cold has missed you barely. You see this like ice sort of uh, rushing mm -hmm. up the wall and then it sort of like shatters and begins to melt as the magic fades. Uh, Enna, what would you like to do? You really um, can't see much of the room from where you're currently at because you're like down the stairs. Okay. Um, so can I rush up the stairs like five and I guess right here? So the stairs are difficult to rain, so or, it, it costs double movement to move up the stairs. So five, ten, fifteen, twenty. So with thirty feet, you can get to behind Solomon, which is enough that you probably can see into the room from there. Uh, okay. But to sort of keep you stuck on the stairs a little bit, unfortunately. Mm. Okay, <clears throat> that's fine. I think with that, then, and is just going to attack, and she's just going to do... Just, uh, she'll do Scorching Ray. Okay. Uh, all right. Let's see. Um, you know, with your ability, <clears throat> do we not get some healing off of that? Yes. Of... Oh, yeah, yeah. The uh, um, sugar. What? The soul of Ren. So, like, if I hit somebody, then like somebody else can take like healing from that. Oh boy. Yeah, we're we're using so incidentally for folks at home, we are using uh some fun extra rules from Kingdoms of Warfare and Strongholds of Followers. So let's see. When you damage a creature with an attacker spell, choose another creature to give them temporary hit points. One equal to one d six plus times your proficiency bonus. So, Heck yes. Yeah. Uh, so if you hit with this spell, you can do that. 
Uh, so this spell, go ahead. We'll do the spell first. So go ahead and you'll get three attack rolls unless you're casting at a higher higher level. Okay. <clears throat> Let me get to the... Uh, 25, 20, 15. Okay. Uh, let's see. Kaliga is going to... Uh, okay. Um, all of those hit. So go okay. ahead and roll all the damage for that, and then we'll deal with the extra ability after that. Okay. And I forget, I can just click on it in the chat, right? In the chat, yeah, right. So right where it says okay. Scorching Ray, always, you can click that three times, and it will roll okay. for you. Seven, two... Oh, and it you the you it'll be nine on that second one. It's adding crit damage, which oh for that like nat yeah, twenty, which also apparently okay. the crit damage is not set up on that spell correctly. That's my bad, but oh. that's fine because we're doing the max crit thing, aren't we? On this in this campaign, I forget honestly. Uh, okay, so I that is so. seven, uh, eight, nine plus nine is eighteen. Who boy? Uh, yeah, so you fire off and slam poof, 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 these three fire bolts. Um, streak across and hit Caliga, uh, and you kind of shoot him like halfway under the table because like your line of sight is crazy on this. Uh, and then you get to add the one d six times three. So go ahead and roll that one d six and choose a creature within thirty feet to give it some uh, HP. Okay. And I do that three times. You do it once, I think. It says anytime you damage it with a spell, Scorching Ray is one spell, even though it has okay. three, you know, kabooms to it. So. Okay, so four. So four times three the, is twelve. Because it's it's one d six times yeah, the proficiency. Yeah, okay. yeah. So uh, yeah. Roz, you gain twelve temporary hit points. Thank so. you. That is an awesome spell. So I think <laughs> as your as your flames sort of fire across, a little bit of like ember sort of trails off and goes and kind of like swirls around Roz and this sort of like warming light as the kind of like like rain begins to fall outside the tower um and actually Perdita you're standing there sorry I missed that before uh and like lightning strikes as you battle this necromancer the sort of like weather pattern is changing these arcane forces are smashing across this uh this broken tower and this just like warming light sort of comes over and infuses Roz with a little bit of extra warmth against the uh against the cold that is going to bring us to our first vampire spawn who is going to attack Roz. So, nope, that's not the thing I want to hit. Uh, let's see. I've got a 13 to hit. That does not hit. Okay, second attack. Is a 25 to hit? Oh, come on. Yeah, of course that hits. <laughs> uh, and this time, rather than... Uh, rather than deal damage, it is actually going to grab onto you, and you are currently grappled. Not restrained, just grappled. So uh, it takes and grabs its claws onto you. It doesn't deal any damage, but you feel it like holding your shoulders in this superhumanly powerful undead grasp. Uh, that is all it can do on its turn. You may not rub my belly. One thing. <laughs> uh... Since Roz didn't go down to the death ward, silence should still be up, correct? Mm, yes. Oh, uh, concentration. Yeah. Saving. You'll have to make a con save 23. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's a failure. <laughs> yeah, okay. No, so, no, silence is not up, unfortunately. Good good catch, oh, well. though, Jesse. I, that, that was, I totally forgot about silence. Yet. Okay, oh, well. Solomon, you're up. Oh, I've been ravenous for this. <laughs> <laughs> Solomon, you get a plus two to your AC, one extra attack, and your speed is doubled. Okay, so since my speed is doubled, Solomon's going to immediately close the gap to this necromancer. Okay. And when Solomon gets within distance, he's going to, first off, with a bonus action, he's going to burn his uh, channel divinity for Val of Amity. So basically what okay. it does is when he's within 10 feet of somebody, 
he gains advantage on attack rolls against this creature for one minute. Okay, let's see. Oh, Bow of enmity. Let's what use in this the nice. World? It's a vengeance paladin thing. Oh that's my goodness. Nice. That's really nasty. Yeah. That's stacked as fuck. That would be um, crazy if he had a magical great sword. I'm I'm not done yet. So that's your bonus action. My for my first action. Oh I'm wait, going is that a bonus to, action? Yes, it is. Okay. Yes, it is. For my first action, I'm going to radiant consumption. Okay. Use your action to unleash divine energy, cause a searing light. <clears throat> Transformation lasts for a minute or until you end it as bonus action. During it, you shed bright light in a 10-foot radius. Uh, each creature takes radiant damage. So you have like a, a aura of damage now? Plus, Is that what I'm to it, plus, it adds my level as divine damage or radiant damage whenever I attack. Okay, let's see. Each creature takes radiant damage equal to half your level rounded up. And once, and once per turn, you deal extra radiant damage. Yes. Okay. Equals your right. level. Okay. So, and I'm going to make a Frostbrand greatsword attack at advantage. Okay. Let me find it here. Oh, Creep. that's Divine Smite. I'm sorry. Oh, there it is! <laughs> oh, <laughs> fuck you! Fuck me! Oh, wow. God I'm damn. going to... Divine <laughs> Smite. Yeah, you gotta pull oh, it. For folks at home, that is a nat 20. That's a 28 to hit. That hits. I have a question. Yes. Is this Necromancer an undead? No. Actually. Ah. Uh, oh, wait. No, yes, it is. Yes, it is. It is an arch lich. You have to be an arch. You have to be undead to be an arch lich. Sorry. Yes. Okay. It's weird because she doesn't have some of the same da damage resistances yeah. and stuff, uh, but is actually an undead. My bad. I think I think that's an extra D8 radiant damage on Divine Smite too. Oh wait, it says medium uh. humanoid. Oh wait, no, that's weird. I think this is a mistake in the stat box. I'm gonna rule that it is. She has an ability called Arch Lich. I don't think you can be an Arch Lich without being undead. So, but it does say medium humanoid instead of undead. So that's just kind of weird. But yeah, we'll say uh, we'll say of course that she's undead if she's an Arch Lich. So let me let me <laughs> make sure the Divine Smite ruling. I'm sorry. Uh, and I'm going to actually change this stat block. Uh, where is it? Okay, Divine Spot maximum up to 5d8. Yeah. The damage increases by 1d8 if the target... So she's going to take 3d8 Divine... You know what? Great sword damage. Let's just do this. Okay. Okay, <laughs> so... That's so many numbers. That's yeah. plus... That's uh, plus. Uh, I need to roll one d eight. Okay. Six and add seven to all that, and that's how much damage it. Hold deals. on, that one d eight is uh, is actually twelve because that is also doubled. Yeah. Well, that's, no, no, it's not. It's not twelve. It's fourteen because we're doing it's actually the max maxed. Grip. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. So. Geez. Okay. So hang on. Let's parse this very carefully because you know we want to do this thing. We want to yeah. do things right. So. Uh, let's take things one at a time. Your greatsword itself is going to deal 22 points of damage from the crit. So. And then the cold damage is 7 on top of that. And then you're doing a first level smite. Is that right? Uh, I think it's going to be a level 2. Sorry, I didn't. No, that's okay. Um, I mean, since you can do it after you know you've connected with the attack, you can do whatever level you want as far as I'm concerned. Um, which is going to be, uh, let's look at Divine Smite. I want to just read the text on this. That's fun. Uh, da, 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 da. Good. Where the hell is it? You have oh, so many and abilities in here. If, thanks there to the great weapon master, I get to re-roll the one on my, uh, damage there. Okay. So it's right. 1d6. Amazing. Okay, so extra 2d8 plus for each spell slot plus 1d8 for each level uh, to a maximum of 5d8 increases by 1d8 if it is a fiend to a maximum of 68. So we did not cross the maximum, so that part doesn't matter. Uh, let's see, so... so at level 2, it should be 3d8. This right? radiant... So at level 2, it's going to be 4d8 because it's 2d8 for yep. level 1, 1d8 because she's an undead, and then an extra 1 for being level 2. So I need to roll another D8. Uh, right? So you've rolled one. 
You've rolled 2d8 here. Did this and Radiant not... The, the Radiant didn't... Oh, the Radiant did its max correctly. Okay. So there's 2d8 there. One d Yes, yeah, so you need one more d8. Okay. Okay. And that one also is 16. Jesus fucking Christ. So 16 plus 14 plus okay. 10. So... So that's 30 plus 10 is 40. Okay, I'm going to just go down the chat and do this. So I've got 8 plus 11 is 19. Plus 14, right? Yeah. Is 33. 31. 33, excuse me. Plus 1, because I missed one of the cold damage, because you re-rolled that. Which, and I had included the 1, but now it's 2. It plus wasn't the cold six, damage. It, no, it was, it was the his slashing. sword. Yeah. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <clears throat> well, it's still one more damage, because you had rolled a yeah. 1 on it, and now it's a 2. Plus yeah. the 16 from that last one is 50 more. Jesus Christ. Plus... Seven from his from his ability. Um. Yes. So minus seven more, which actually is fourteen, isn't it? No. Yeah. No, because modifiers like that are not doubled dice. So. Right. Yeah. Okay. And then where did it include your actual? Here it would have included your strength mod. So that's been included. Okay. And Jesus. So just, just to explain for the folks at home, the crit rule we're Ooh. using is every damage die you roll if you crit. Instead of multiplying it by two or rolling two of them, we just give you a max roll of one set of your crit God set, damn. and then you roll your normal damage and add that on top. That was 81 fucking damage. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Hell yeah, let's go. Ooh. And they're still up? Oh yeah, come on. I know I'm running bosses <laughs> in a party with Daniel. What the fuck do you think I'm about? You have to double every all the hit points. <laughs> okay, all right. That is Solomon's action, bonus action, movement. That brings so, us. Go ahead. I would say how Solomon does it is he just crosses the room, and before he makes a strike, he looks at the necromancer and he goes, "You should have left the uh, silence up. I'm gonna remove you from this existence." And then he just smites him. Okay. Uh, that brings us to the next um, one of these. Hmm. Oh, she takes uh, damage now since my turn ended. Uh, doesn't it? Is, wouldn't it be on her turn? Let's see what it says. I think uh, during it says it, the... At the end of each of your turns, they take radiant damage equal half your level rounded down. Okay, so that is four. three. You guys are oh, level rounded down seven, three. right? Three yeah. damage. Okay. Three more yep. damage. Jesus. <laughs> Okay, that brings us to this first vampire spawn. It's in a target-rich environment. Um, I think this, I think this one is gonna zip over here for Silas, though. So, um, all right, claw attack. I've got a sixteen to hit. Misses. And an eight to hit. Okay, uh, that is not a hit. That brings us to Shanty. All I think right, that's so, probably, out, I don't know what, maybe not in the level 21 shot. That might be the single, single largest amount of damage in AOA history in a single attack. That not even like a single insane. turn, just a single attack. Good lord. I was so distracted just now because I had to tell my husband what happened. <laughs> okay, awesome. Shanti, you're up. The vampire spawn has moved over to attack Silas and Wift. Um, Solomon is going toe-to-toe -to -toe with this necromancer. What would you like to do? I am trying, I'm attempting to zoom on over uh, to confront this vampire, um, okay. but I know it's difficult terrain, so can yeah, I get so to five, there? 5, 10, Solomon 15, 20, yeah, 25 through. feet will get you to the vampire. Okie dokie. Uh, and I'm going to go ahead and I guess attack with my rapier here. Okay, let her rip. Okay, that is an eight. Oof. Okay. So cool. That's, that's so we didn't we didn't do so great. Uh, <laughs> well, I guess uh, I guess I will. I guess that's that's what I could do right now. It's just very effective. Okay. All right. Well, you move up into melee and start taking swipes. So it goes and moves in and, and it starts attacking Silas. You start attacking it. No one is hitting anyone. D and D combat, everyone. <laughs> 
<laughs> Meanwhile, <laughs> Silas is in the background chopping Galaga into pieces. Uh, how ridiculous. Okay. Um, all right. Any bonus actions or anything, or is that it for Shanty? I believe that is it for me for okay. now. All right, Roz. Uh, you got some temp HP. You, your death ward went off. Uh, and I think when your death ward goes off, again, there's sort of this, like, um, angelic sort of light behind you and uh, the brief image of Father Belderone praying sort of uh, and clasping over your hand sort of passes through your minds as one of your lives, this is not a real mechanic, I want to remind everyone, uh, is sort of like pushed back into your little feline chest. Uh, Roz, what you got? Uh, don't let him lie to you, everyone at home. This is absolutely a real mechanic. Roz real mechanic. does have five lives left. Uh, so one life, if he, gets, a, if he dies, if she dies, she dies. Not true. So, uh, Roz is going to uh, bloodied and wheezing uh, shout towards Caliga. And may I introduce the hand of Ren, Solomon. <laughs> and uh, grant bardic inspiration to Solomon. Nice. Not that he needs it, <laughs> but maybe he will. And uh, as uh, as she does, uh, as she is grappled by this vampire spawn, mm -hmm. um, she is going to. Uh, can, does she have to grapple it back, or are they just entangled? Um, so you are under the effect of the grappled condition, and it is not. So your speed, like, and grappled, uh, we'll just sort of grab it here, and I'll put it in chat so we know. Because grappled and restrained are, like, similar, right. but not exactly the same. So um, I... So I'm going to put that in chat. Like there you go. counter grapple okay. the vampire spawn. Okay, so you will make a... Uh, Was it an attack roll? It's, it's, it's a modified attack roll using your athletics, and it can make either an athletics or acrobatics to resist. Its claw attack doesn't afford you the opportunity to resist because it just says it can grapple you. Um, mm -hmm. Most of the time, if it's just regularly making a grapple attack, it has to make, you can make a counter check. But in this Roz case, is, yeah. So go ahead. Roz is going to uh, burn inspiration to grant uh, advantage on this. That's a 22 athletics to okay. grapple. All right. That's a pretty tough sell. Come on. Oof, that's only a 20. It is grappled. Yes. So you have mutually um, grappled each other. Uh, can Roz use her movement to no. attempt? No. You have no movement. Your speed is zero uh, and its speed is zero, unfortunately. Gotcha, gotcha. So you were both oh, okay. just sort of like grappled. Neither of you will now be able to move until you break this grapple. Can I? I can't also break the grapple, though. Um, no, I mean, if you had like an action gotcha. surge, you could try to use it because it'll take it takes an action Do to not. try to break a grapple to make an escape. That's fine. That, uh, that so. is Roz's or if turn. you cast anything that forces one or the other of you to move. So one of you like someone could shove the creature and it would break both of your grapples or thunder wave or anything like that would automatically force the grapples to break. Um, so. Gotcha. I think uh, that's the end of Roz's turn. Push him out of the building. Yeah. I mean, do you've it. only got the one attack, right? Or do you have extra attack? I do, actually. I do so have So you can make though. additional attacks. You could, uh, instead of you, so if you're trying to get it off the ledge, you could make a shove and try and shove it off the ledge. I would like to do that. Okay. And so that would, I think, be the same ruling. Let me see if I can't. Is there like a, no, that's shovel. I think that's probably what contested under, athletics. Yeah, it would be contested athletics. So yeah. Okay, oh, here it goes. That's a nineteen. That's Ooh, pretty good. Vampire got a twenty-one on that one. All right. So you guys are locked. You're trying to trip it off the ledge. It's trying to bite you. Basically, you can tell it's trying to go in for the kill, uh, and you, neither of you is quite able to accomplish what you're after. Silas, you are up. You've got vampires on one side, vampires on the other side, and in the distance, in the background, shining radiant Solomon glowing with holy light and a big-ass sword. Uh, yeah, lots I can try to do, but none of it's great. Um, okay. 
I am going to... If I kick this creature, would I get advantage from a grapple from the fact that he's grappling it? Um, she's grappling it. I don't. Or would I kick them both off the so. ledge? <laughs> uh, no, if you move that creature, it will break both their grapples. Uh, so if you go try to kick that, you won't have advantage. I don't think because it's not restrained. If it was restrained, you would. But grapple was mm. restrained is like an additional effect that it requires like magic and shit or other abilities to do. Um, but yeah, if you try, you, you might be able to knock it off the edge. There's plenty I'd like to do. Um, and nothing bad will happen to Roz if you do that, but mostly involves <laughs> dropping haste, which was something I desperately don't want to do. Um, okay. I will turn to Shanty and Enna and just yell spread out, um, in hopes that they might hit, they might hit us with another cone of cold. And I'm going to spin around. Whoops! Spin around this one. Take my two swipes with my rapier. Twenty-five and a thirteen. Seven piercing. It is magical. And then I'm going to jump into this corner over here. Yep. Shit, that hits. Okay. <clears throat> yep. Okay. All right. Well, Perdita is furious, but she sees everything that is happening and is hoping that Solomon has a grip on things across the room. And she she steadies herself. She plants her feet firmly in the opening, uh, which is granting herself advantage because she is taking steady aim. And you will all see that her massive tail snaps out directly straight beside her. And where it has like a leather uh, encapsul a thing that encapsulates the tail, as she snaps it out, you will see that there are actually uh, spikes that stick up out of it. And she says to the the vampire that she is in range with, and also she says... Uh, and is also grappling our Raz. She says, Pas ma cousine, et pas aujourd'hui, cochon. And she is going to smack it with her tail, hoping that the force of the tail will not only hit it and hurt it, but knock it out of the window. Okay, so you can either damage or shove. You can't do both on the same attack unless you have an ability that says you can do that. So um, I'm going to leave that up to you to decide which, but you won't be able to do both. I mean, unless you knock it unconscious, in which case I'd allow that to be like freely a part of the attack. But um, Well, can I tell how damaged it is? Um, it, it looks like it's still rolling pretty strong. It's not well, within the death's Well, the truth of the matter is... As wonderful as my tail is, it is not magic. Yeah. And so I believe that I'm going to go to attempt to grapple it, to undo the grapple and knock it out of the okay. window. So you're going to make an athletics check uh, versus its athletics check. All right. Now, there are extra things I can roll if I need them, right? Can I use my bardic inspiration for you that? You can use bardic inspiration for that. So I'm going to roll right. for the vampire and tell you what you've got to beat. You have to beat a 21 on an athletics check. Damn, this thing is rolling great on these athletics checks. Oh, I go. Okay, that's a 14. 14. If you roll, if you, it's a D8 you die. You only get a 20. You only get an 8 or a, a 7 or an 8 would do it. And I, I think that's. So that's up to you if you want to try to use it or if you want to save it for another time. Do you have chat inspiration? You want to use on this? You also could roll, use an inspiration to roll again. Well, if you why want. don't that. 
and that doesn't determine whether I use the bardic inspiration or not. That right? is correct. It does not. Well, you I could might as well try, use chat and, and then I save. will use. Uh, I will use my chat inspiration then. Okay. And I will roll that athletics check again. And I get the 23. 23. Uh, that does it. Yeah, it rolled a 21, so that does it. No bardic needed. So you lash out with this tail uh, and the extra weight on the end of the tail, and you sort of slam it into the back of this thing's knees, which buckle and shove it uh, five feet off the edge. You are 60 feet in the air. Actually, this is... You're 50 feet in the air because you're halfway up a 20 foot floor, basically. So you are, well, no, wait, 20, 40. No, no, you're 60 feet in the air. Yeah. So uh, this thing is going to take, what is what is falling damage? It's like 1d6 it's per 10 1D6 feet. 1d6 every 10 feet. Okay. Uh, with a max, I think there's a max. Yeah, but the max is like 100 damage. and some feet. Right. Right. So 66. Yeah, 10d6. That's correct. What is this? So as it falls, it will take 66 bludgeoning damage. The fact that it is resistant to types of damage may mean that this is yeah. less devastating than we hope it will be. But Yeah, but then they have to run chunk. all the way up the stairs. <laughs> yeah. 1d6 right. for every 10 feet. So this is 66. I mean, 66 is, is no joke regardless. Actually, I shouldn't have rolled that. I, um, well, no, that's fine. It's... Actually, Perdita, I'm going to let you roll the 66s. I we think it's, it's your damage. You should one. get the no. Uh, Perdita, roll 66s if you know how. If you don't, we'll just use a 13. Well, I can roll five on this thing right here. Okay. Five is 17, and then I'm going to roll, roll again. More. It's okay, 23. That was a much better roll. Uh, so 23 damage is going to be... Uh, What is that? 11? Yeah. Okay, so you knock this thing out the window. It is now 60 feet below you, and... Uh, has it and land and is prone, so we'll have to use movement to stand up. So, uh, and I did it. not use my bardic inspiration, okay. but I did use a oh, you know what? Clear back to the other thing. I hate to say this, but do you remember that I said I had steady aim? Oh, you had advantage, yeah. Well, I don't know that steady aim would work on an athletics check like that, though. Oh, because it, well, then. Because it's like a oh, shove. I mean, it gives you advantage on attack roll, but I don't know how that. Well, see, I didn't know what you weird. were going to do with it. Well, I want yeah. my bonus action back then. Um, yeah, I'll give you, I don't <laughs> think, it, I don't think steady aim would give you advantage on that athletics, but I will give you your bonus action back. The grappling rules in fifth edition are kind of bunk. So oh, we're well, working no, around a lot. Right, well, and the, the steady aim, it like gives you advantage on attack and the rules for shoving. And this is really a shove, which is not a grapple. And it says it's a special kind of attack that uses athletics instead. And so I don't know what that means. I don't know if it is an attack and therefore gets the steady aim or, but it doesn't seem like it should, you know what I mean? Like, cause I don't know. It's weird. So I'm going to roll that it doesn't, but you have your bonus action back. What would you like to do? Well, I, if I if I use the steady aim, I can't use it on my next turn, can I? Do you see what I'm saying? I, I I can't take a bonus action to use on my next turn. I have to take. You can't a bonus ready action. a bonus action. No, you can't save it and use it. But you can use your movement and any bonus action. You could move somewhere and try to bonus action hide to get advantage on an attack, or you could move a, a extra far with a dash. You know, uh, you can do All a lot right. of stuff. With well, it. I think that having um, having done that, let I want to move. All right. Yep. OK. And there's that thing I have about the movement. I can double my speed until the end of the turn. I want to get on the stairs uh, over where Anna is. And I don't know that I had to use my bonus, bonus action for that or not. Um. You okay? That thing has already used its reaction. Yeah, you can. Okay, so that's five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty feet will get you onto the stairs down below where Anna is. Okay, sure. does that obliterate my view that far down? If it does, then I want to be above Anna on uh, the stairs. Yeah, I, I don't want to look. I think it probably. I don't think you could see from there. It's, it's you know, we don't have like a 3D space to look All at right. your line of sight. I'm going but. to do it there. And the reason why I'm going to do it there is to keep my eyes on the stairs in case that thing comes back. Plus, it also gets me in range of the okay. other one. Perdita, make and an insight check. I can check. still see Perdita, the guy that Perdita, he... make an insight check. 
that is still I can see the guy with um okay, wait a minute. Now if I'm doing insight check, I gain proficiency in the insight skill whenever I hit with the light Oh, whenever I hit with a light weapon or a ranged weapon, I gain a bonus to damage rolls equal to your proficiency bonus. We've already factored that into your damage Thank you. the calculations on the sheet. All um, right. So okay. I'm doing insight? Yes. Insight check. Nine. Okay. Fair enough. All right. Uh, yeah. So you move well, over you there to watch the stairs. I couldn't see it, and you didn't call it. Oh, it sorry. A it's a nine. Yeah. Sorry. It's a nine. Uh, so on that, that's fine. Uh, you move over there next to the stairs to watch for that thing. Uh, that's your movement in action. You don't need a bonus action. I don't think anything you can do with it. That brings us to Caliga Lifebane. Yes. Uh, Caliga is going to look at. Uh, Solomon and uh, Solomon uh, she's going to cast a spell she can cast blight so Solomon uh, I need you to make a DC 14 constitution saving throw All right, I get plus 4 on it because of uh or of protection. Yeah. Additionally, you, you you still also have bardic inspiration if you need That's it. a 21, baby. Okay. Great. So you only take 20 points of necrotic damage. Oh, yeah. There we go. Oh, so, I take half. five resistance, the radiant necrotic. Okay. So you take 10 points of necrotic damage as she sort of just like uh, gathers all this necromantic energy and just like shoves it into your body. Um, okay, and that is Caliga's action. Let's see. Is there anything else that Caliga can do? She can try to run away. Da -da -da -da. You can jump out a window. <laughs> I can't promise Relentless Avenger won't get her, though. Okay. All right. Um... Solomon nope, just jumps out it. the window with uh, a sword. Anna, you're like, up. Ah! You shall not pass. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> just shovel knighting on your way down. Oh my gosh. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Can I get a uh, fire? If I'm like partially on the stairs, would it like one space be like 10 feet still? That yes. Sense? Yeah. So okay. that last so spot where Perdita is, okay. is like coming up out of that is still stairs. So it would be 10 okay. feet to get there. So 10. So I can, I can get here, right? That's let's like see. 30 10, feet. 10, 20, 25, 30. Or let's see. Well, Five, I, have, 10, I have 30 15, feet of 20, me. 30 25, 30. Feet of me, me. Yeah. So that's 30 feet to get there. Okay, cool. I will shift all the way over here then. And let's see. I am going to. And I was going to do Guiding Bolt on. Uh, yeah, this guy, the old man. Okay, she's an old woman, but okay. Oh, sorry. That's all right. I didn't mean to miss. No, that's fine. Yeah. I, 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 we haven't talked about yeah. her a lot, so that's okay. Um, uh, okay, so Guiding Bolt, uh, you're going to make your attack roll. Yes. Cool. 25. 25 hits. Go ahead and roll damage. <laughs> 13. Okay, 13 <laughs> damage as you... Fire off a radiant bolt. Oh, and can Ouch. I give some more um, healing points to Roz since I hit? Uh, I yes. can only have one. Oh, you can only have one source of temporary hit points. hit points. You should give it to someone else. Okay. But your boy, Whoa, that was cool. A little rough. <laughs> I'm a wizard. Silas needs some. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can okay. I give it to some healing points to Silas? Yes. So it's one d six times three. So go ahead and roll your d six. 
Yes, sir. Six <laughs> times three. Twenty-four. Damn. Damn. So uh, Silas, you get twenty-four. Eighteen. 18 yeah. So yeah, eighteen, 18 uh, temporary hit points. Thank you, Beast. I'm tired. That guys. is okay, nuts. I can't now. <laughs> okay. Anna, uh, so... Anna looks over at Silas and just goes. <laughs> Yeah, and again, I think we see as you launch that holy uh, bolt, uh, which slams into the creature uh, or the necromancer, uh, some of that holy light sort of wisps over infusing Silas. Uh, that brings us to this uh, thing that is down on the ground, which has to use half of its movement to stand up. So that is 15 feet to stand up in the first place. And is going to uh, Roz. You can see down there, or I, I guess Roz, are you looking down there? Yeah, I think Roz okay. is. I think you so, know. Roz, you see this thing <laughs> with like vampiric agility begins to just spider climb its way back up the building. So uh, it can dash. So it gets forty-five feet back up the sixty-foot drop, just like <laughs> with inhuman speed you know how like you see in video in like movies when vampires like crawl across the walls and stuff uh it's doing that it's pulling one of those Solomon, hurry <laughs> uh yeah and fangs bared uh crawling up the walls that is action and uh half of its movement these things don't really have bonus actions oh but it did not take any holy damage last turn i don't think so bam uh solomon that's you all right, now time to finish the engine and bonus action hunter's mark. Let him cook. Uh, counterspell. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to I, make... I figured so. I could have counterspelled that guiding bolt, but I was like, no, Daniel's going to pull some bullshit. And she knows that. <laughs> she knows that you're the real threat. <sighs> she may not. She may not make it past this next turn, but we'll see. Okay, so uh, Guiding Bolt, or no, that was Hunter's Mark was your bonus action. Yeah, I got to pop the level one spell slot away. And I got to take her going. level three spell slot for that counter spell. <laughs> the things you pay for. Anyways. So you still have three attacks all at advantage. All at advantage, and I'm going to level, and I think I can level two smite all three of them. Yeah, you can. Absolutely, you can. Yeah, I straight yeah. up can. Don't forget you have bardic inspiration. I knew, I knew. Anyways, all right, here it comes. Let okay. me go back up to the top. Okay, first attack. No, no, you are fucking kidding me. Daniel has <laughs> hacked. No. Daniel has <laughs> hacked roll 20. I don't fucking wow. believe this. <laughs> no wow. 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 That, is, that is not possible. Okay. Okay. Flawless. flawless. Fine. Double crit. Double crit. Jesus <laughs> fucking Christ. What is happening right now? Huh. Okay. Wow. We have to do all the math. Yeah. Uh, that, wow. That's, that's an extra 2d8 plus yeah. 7. Uh, no. Well, 2d8 plus 7 the plus radiant. 16 for the, for the crit. Yeah. Radiant damage. Seven plus radiant. 16. Whoops, I'm getting somebody's back up. That was Holy Okay, shit. so... Right, well. Oh, and you rolled a one on one. Oh, that's a Divine Smite. Well, you did yep. still roll a one on one of your things if you want to roll that add one. I'll Bardic Inspiration to yeah, it. Yeah, and Why you'll not? get another eight for that. <laughs> Are you going to Great Weapon Master and re-roll the one on that damage too? Why not? Uh, I can't re-roll the one on the... Oh, yeah, I can. Listen. Mm, yeah, mm, why not? I might as well help you out, buddy. You got a lot there's, of mechanics there, here. There's a three, and here's the D8 for the Bardic Inspiration. Okay. All doubled. The Bardic is double. Uh, well, it's not doubled. The it's, Bardic it's is six plus, plus eight. eight. It's yeah. 14. Yeah. Okay, oh. so let's walk through this one thing at a time. You're plus 12 hat on the slashing, plus uh, it's going to get plus two, which is going to make that a 13. <laughs> so 13... Plus 12 is 25. 25. Okay. And then your cold damage is max damage. So there's minus 12 more. Okay. And then your radiant damage is going to be 2d8 plus 16. And actually, I don't think your radiant damage is doing its thing right. I think this. Hang on, I'm gonna fix it. It's on not. Your... I gotta burn a level two spell slot, anyways. Well, and that's why I gotta. I gotta. I'm gonna try and fix something on your sheet here. 
Uh, okay, this global right. damage modifier on crit needs to be 16. Bloop. There you go. All right. Uh, so it's nine, or it's, yeah, nine plus four plus three plus three. So nine. Where's my, I just gonna get the calculator out for this, honestly. Okay. Nine plus four plus three plus three. Do you also like doing math plus and three. making believe with your plus friends? You could also play D&D. &D. 16, right? For, for that first 2d8. Plus another 16. Plus eight. 59 more points of damage. Jesus fucking Christ. I have two more attacks, too. That is correct. Yikes. Yikes. Okay. Oh, that's that's wrong. Hang on. I screwed up your hit points. Um, Solomon, put your hit points back wherever they were. I'm sorry. Okay, I was at 37. No, okay. you're fine. All right, Solomon. All right, two more Killer. attacks. No, you don't. What do you need the attacks for? She's dead. Oh. Describe this to me. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. Explodes. She probably she probably tries to uh, attack Solomon with that necromatic damage, but I think he just goes right through it. And as he swings, as the blade makes contact, everyone sees a bright flash. And as the light fades, Solomon kind of stands back up into like a like hefts his uh, great sword over his shoulder. And the only thing left of the necromancer is a kind of like a pillar statue of salt. Okay, yeah. Uh, so the, the necromancer just like turns into salt and crumbles <laughs> into a pile of undead dust on the ground. Uh, that is one attack, Solomon. You have movement and uh, your bonus action got counterspelled. Uh, but you do have a movement and your additional two attacks. And your movement is like doubled, so yeah, you're Solomon. at like sixty feet, man. You can you can close, yeah. Solomon's absolutely. gonna close in on this vampire, and okay. he's gonna. Well, he doesn't have advantage on this attack, but okay. Twenty four. Twenty four hit. hits. Who needs it? I'm gonna divine smite <laughs> it. Okay. Uh, for some blessings. Reason. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and it's undead. So roll one more d eight. One. Yeah. Yeah, and reroll your, your one. It's a two, but so eight, okay. Like nine, three, nine, eighteen okay. plus three, twenty, so twenty-one. Nine radiant plus nine slashing eight. plus three cold plus one more d eight because it's uh, it's undead. Undead. The suspense is killing me. Now remember, kids, fiends and undead are deathly allergic to paladins. I'm so, uh, is that D8 coming? Oh, I'm sorry. We're <laughs> waiting on you, buddy. Uh, plus one uh, more. That's okay. a one. So yep. that is yep. 22 total points of damage. You get one more attack. And you got one more yeah. attack. All right, here we go. It's 15 hit. Uh, I think it does, yeah. Okay. Yes, oh, 15 hit. Frostbrand. And that's a one level... One more D8. It's a level one smite. Okay. So it's Oh, did you D8. level two smite the other one or level one? Uh, uh, level... So the last one was a level two smite. Okay, you get... Well, so yeah, give me one more D8 for that last one, and then we'll do the damage for this one. All right, seven. Okay, uh, and then uh, you roll one more d8 for this one. All right. One. Okay, 10 plus 14 plus 2 plus 1. So 27 more. Okay. Uh, yeah, so you just start laying into this thing. Uh, is that it? Yeah. Oh, did you deal your extra... Uh, my seven? radiant. Uh, I dealt my uh, extra... To it, that's dealt... right. That's right. Yeah, yeah. To But it does take three more damage as you... End your turn. Actually, I'm sorry. Everybody within 10 feet of me takes three Ooh, damage. Okay. It's got to be who you choose, right? Um, Let's see what it says. I think it's I think it's everyone. I apologize. Oh, it's fine. Let's take a look at it. All right, uh, what is this thing called? It's Radiant Consumption. Yep, there it is. 
Okay. No, no. no. Okay. Uh, each yeah. creature within 10 feet of you. It does not say mm. that you select. So, yes. Everything within 10 feet of Solomon um, takes the three points of radiant damage. Including it's Solomon himself. And Solomon um, is literally glowing with light. Yeah. And threatened to char you. Yeah, so you did take it as well. Did you take it last time? I did. I've been taking it. Okay. And it lasts for one minute. Okay, so I'm actually going to add to... We're going to call this Radiant Consumption. Uh, it's going to lose. Uh, we're going to give it that. Bam. Close. Hang on. Radiant Consumption. Okay. Um... So it's been rating consumption has been active for two rounds total. Uh, and that brings us to that vampire spawn, uh, which in desperation is going to try to. Uh, it's going to try to start with by clawing uh, Silas. Uh, it's a 24 to hit Silas. Shield. OK. And um, what does that raise your AC to? 25. Okay, uh, and then it is going to try to bite you. That's only an 11. Okay. Uh, and it does not regain hit points because it has taken radiant damage. Uh, Shanty, you're up. Okie dokie. So we're going to try this uh, rapier attack just one more time. <laughs> Go. Yeah. Uh, 19, 19 hits. Hit. Yep. Nice. Alrighty, and... Oh. Oh. Well, at least we hit something this time, right? <laughs> oh, God, yep. So you, uh, as so Solomon is uh, crashing around with all these smites, you do dip in and get a nice stab in. Uh, anything else from Shanty? Uh, yep, I'd like to go ahead and use my uh, bonus action to cast Healing Word on okay. Roz. Okay. Yep. Go ahead and let her rip. Can do. Sorry. Let's. Ah, oh, see yes. And let's see. All right. Sorry. And it's for one d four. Yeah. Plus your spellcasting. Yep. yep. Okay. And that's plus five. So that's eight. All right. Thank Roz, you. you get eight HP back. And that brings us to Roz. I don't know why everyone is worried about me. I have five lives left. Uh, Roz, looking down at the climbing vampire spawn, uh, is going to bonus action Vicious Mockery. Okay. Uh, that's a DC 15 wisdom save. Okay, that is a 13. That does not save. You look so foolish scaling the walls of this tower. Could you even imagine? Uh, takes four points of psychic damage. Uh, okay. And I believe additionally gets disadvantage on its next attack, it saving does. throw, or ability check. Okay, we're, that's for the disadvantage, and we'll give it four points of psychic damage. Go ahead. Okay. And then, and then Roz is going to say... I don't think you heard me. And is going to cast Thunder Wave at fourth level. Okay. Now, uh, Thunder Wave is a 15 foot cube originating from hmm. an edge of a square that you are on. And this thing is 15 feet away from you. So you may have to hold your action and wait for it to get closer because I think it is actually just at the edge of like outside sure. your range currently so yeah absolutely okay. Roz is going to take in a nice big breath yeah. of air and wait for it to get just close enough okay. for the hiskers yowl okay very good uh that brings us to silas <clears throat> okay so i think that um as this vampire comes for a claw and then opens its mouth to try to bite Silas. Silas puts his wand between them and the shield spell activates. Okay. And then after that, takes his wand and shoves it into the vampire's mouth. I'm going to cast magic missile at fourth level. Okay, sure. Let her um, That should be six. Uh, Three, and then two is four. 
And then three is five, four is six. Yes, 64. Yep. So, so go ahead and just okay. roll all those. I like to do it to roll a d4 that many times rather than just roll once and use that as the total. So go ahead and uh, roll me 64s. Okay. So I don't that's... care what Jeremy Crawford said on Twitter. He's not the king of D&D. &D. Nine. At this table, we do 14. we do other stuff. 16. 18. Okay. 20. Okay. Straight 20. Uh, is that? Wait. 4 plus 5 plus I think 5 it's plus 2 more than plus that. 4 plus yeah. 2. Yeah, that's 22, actually. 22. 22. Yeah. Even even more. Even oh, better. man. Yeah, this thing is looking bad. You badly, like, you break its jaw. Its fangs are kind of like one of its fangs flies out of its head. Uh, this thing is in extremely bad shape after that hit. Uh, but barely still kicking. Per oh, also, Silas, I want you to make an arcana check for me. Sure. Shit. Beautiful. Love it. That's a nat one. Distracted. Yeah, uh, you are you are very much because this thing is like trying to bite you and you've got your shield up and you're you're battling it. Uh, that is everything for you. Uh, Perdita, you're up. Well, Perdita steps into the fray and seeing how badly injured it is. And again, she twirls around in a circle a little bit, which gives some additional impetus to her tail. And she uh, she hits it around the neck with okay. her tail. All right, let her rip. And that, I believe, is a bonus action for you. 26 does hit. Um, The hitting it with my tail is a bonus action? Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I said that you can make it, yeah. Did I not? Is that not what we said? Well, I don't know. I'd have to go look at it. It's not in front of me right now. Is I it? don't even think. I don't know that I even necessarily put this on your sheet. But yeah, I'm pretty sure what we decided was that your tail spike is a bonus action because you because like rogues don't get multi attack, but that you could make a regular attack with your short bow or your or your claws or your uh, daggers right. and well, a tail spike attack in the same right. round. That is my bonus action, okay. and uh, I got a twenty six to hit. I mean, it. I think you could also use it to as an action if you want, if you would prefer. But you'll be able to get more attacks out of round if you use it as a bonus. Well, action. no, we'll do it as a bonus action. Okay. And so it's a twenty six to hit, and uh, thirteen for sneak attack, and eleven for piercing, and that is okay. twenty four. Yeah. Is so you uh, whip your tail around at the neck, which Silas has already blown most of his face off. So you actually whip your tail in, and it sort of like barely misses as as you kind of pull your wand back. The tail shoots in and just decapitates this vampire. You just crack it right in the neck. With which breaks and the little flap of skin that was holding it on sort of snaps and it just sort of <laughs> onto the floor um, with a nice little kaboom. Uh, so that's your bonus action and your sneak attack. What else from Perdita? Oh, well, I have to have heard what happened with... Um with the Roz at the window, I have to hear her talking. So I'm supposing that I'm moving over to the window, okay. but I don't feel like, I mean, I, I had, so what I had in my hand was my, um, was my short sword. And that other thing is down below me. So I think that, uh, I don't have, I can't get to the bow, right? I can't like make that big a change to whip out my bow and shoot that thing. Um, no, you can have your bow out. Yeah, that's fine. You let me do that? I can go from short sword to bow? Oh. I mean, you get a free... This isn't Pathfinder. Yeah, well, you get a free object interaction as part of your turn. So you can, like, drop... You, you, I guess you'd have to drop your short sword to pull out your bow, technically. Um, but, you know... Well, I'm so going I'll to, leave it up I'm to going to, uh, I'm going to do whatever, even if I have to drop it. And I'm going okay. to use my short bow. And I still haven't used my bardic inspiration if I need it. Plus, I have my luck points. Okay. And I do think you'll have to get over one farther, either to this square or this one, in order to well, actually make, see the thing it so. it to shoot it. Okay. Well, right, which one so do you, a... you want to be in? Do you want to be... Wait, I went away from that screen so okay. I can do my... There's a there's a spot right next to Roz where the vampire originally was attacking you from, and then okay. there's the spot you were originally in when it when you got up in the first place. All right, that's good. Okay, 
All right. Uh, yeah. So go ahead and use okay, your. Okay. So I rolled my short sword. Oh, and it's, it's the only same a 12. Mod, So. But I'm thinking if I use my bardic inspiration, I have a D8. There's a possibility I could get there. Yeah, you could probably get there. Well, I'm going to try the D8. Okay. Let her rip. Oh, Ooh. but I only got one. So yeah, 13 does not get you there, unfortunately. All right. Well, I'm just okay. going to let it go at this point. I'm not going to do anything heroic. Okay. All right. Silas. The thing that you missed on that arcana check, there is a seeping, flowing, dark energy that pools out from Caliga Lifebane's body and crawls across the floor before slinking up the legs of the table and animating the body on the table, which opens its bleary, yellow, red, bloodshot eyes and stands up and looks at all of you. Oh shit! She's back for round two, baby! <laughs> no! I thought you only had one life! I wonder I wonder what that <laughs> body on the table was for, guys. Uh, and from here, the body. she <laughs> is going to cast Blight on... Is that the best thing she can do? No, I think uh, she... Mm, that's a rough choice. She has to stand up there because that is where you are. Um, she is going to... Doesn't have that anymore. That's the so best thing she can do. The body, was, the body was turned in the salt. Does it still crawl out? Well, so her body, which was here, is gone. She, her, like, essence animated this other corpse that was okay. on the table. Okay. Yeah. So it's like whatever it was that was Caliga Lifebane, her soul or her, I don't know, weird necromancy shit, basically oozed over into that other body and animated it. So, yeah, nice try. But uh, <laughs> she came back for round two. Uh, it does look like she's not as comfortable in this body. She doesn't have all of her... Uh, like, she had this crazy coat on and stuff. Like, she she doesn't have everything that she normally would have. Uh, she is going to try to cast... This is maybe a dumb thing she's going to do, uh, given that it probably will miss. But she is going to try to cast... Um, actually, you know what? She's going to cast Invisibility on herself. Mm. Any any counter spells or is this is this going off? Mm. I'm thinking about it, but um, I don't have much left, and I'm afraid she's going to counter spell my counter spells. So, well, she can't counter spell your counter spell if she's casting a spell. Yeah, I I, I think That's technically true. you can't cast a counter spell on a counter spell that is already counter spelling your spell. I believe is the ruling that I've heard. Uh, but someone else can counter spell the counter spell against you. Um, I see. So yeah, uh, I counter highly uh, you, go ahead. Sorry. That's fine. Counter spell. Okay. Uh, cool. I am also going to say the vow of enmity fades because this is uh, she. When they, died. yeah, when their reduced to zero. HP hits zero, it yeah goes very away. confused about counterspell. That's okay, bonus mom. Uh, so okay, you so Silas counterspells. She can't re counterspell that. Um, she is going to um uh, da, 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 da. she is gonna move. A uh, reaction attack of opportunity. Yeah, I gotcha. Uh, go ahead and let her rip. All right. Here She's going to run away from you guys. Does a 16 hit. Um, She is going to use her reaction to cast shield. That burns one of her first level slots. Uh, so no, a 16 does not hit. Okay. Um, so as you swipe out with this shield, uh, she whirls up this sort of shadowy barrier that sort of slows your sword down. And she uh, sprints back across the room. And that is it for Calga Lifebane. Uh, Anna, you are up. Oh, uh, I think I can Relentless Avenger that. Okay. Uh, I don't know what Relentless Avenger is or does, so you'll have to explain that. 
So I think if I make an opportunity attack, I can follow them up the 15 feet. Okay, let's see. With the okay, no, it's when I hit with it. But okay. here's the ruling. Uh, seventh level focus. Da da da. When you hit a creature, you can move up to half your speed. Uh, doesn't provoke opportunity. Okay, yeah. So you uh, unfortunately miss that attack thanks to her shield. Um, and she is able to get away from you somewhat. <laughs> uh, that brings us to Anna. What you got? What's up? Um. Oh, I'm sorry. I should have done. I should have said this a second ago. <clears throat> with the counter spell that I counter spell her invisibility with. Yes. You all see Silas stare for a minute, take his wand, and a scroll comes out of one of his things, and he will cast it with a scroll oh. instead of spending one of his spell slots. You have a scroll of counter spell. Where did that come from? I don't. We, not, we, that, that's crazy. Remember, I made like a bunch of shit. Oh, during that's the right. Yeah, downtime stuff. Wild. I forgot about that. Totally. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Love it. So you keep the spell slot. Use the scroll. Uh, Anna, you're up. Okay. So Girly is not invisible. She is not. She's her invisibility has been counterspelled. Okay. Yeah. That's so she was starting to cast invisibility. Silas uh, <laughs> did not want to let that happen. Yeah. And. Uh, and has although at this point i'm not sure that her current but i don't i don't know what the gender of her of her current body is um i guess we could roll for that roll for gender <laughs> um so <laughs> well, someone roll a d8 again, i guess gen gender isn't about the biological that's a six functions. okay uh yeah. I, I think maybe this body has degraded to the point that it's impossible to tell uh so <laughs> so they are now across the room um, oh, they them. We love it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know how she feels about it yet. She probably hasn't decided she's in the middle of a real important situation and doesn't have time to really interrogate that. So, um, okay. Okay. I'm sorry. They, uh, yeah, they, uh, they don't have time to interrogate that. So, okay. And then I was going to move just over here. Oh, where did she go? Oh, not on the wall right here. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and then. I think I'm just gonna, yeah, and it's just gonna attack, and he is going to. Um, can I do fireball? Is that too much? Um. Well, let's get the template out. <laughs> Not too much. It's never enough. <laughs> All right. I'm you just probably won't. I don't think. Yeah, I don't think you'll hit anybody else. But let's let's get you a template over here. I did not know you had that. Uh. Yes, yeah, she is a yeah, light I do. cleric. Yes, I do. Uh, yes, you can fireball without hitting anyone else. I don't know where precisely in the room you want to put it, but uh, you, I'm going to give you... No, May I have uh, control of it? Anna has control of it. Oh, nope, not Anna. Taylor, you are a person and not a character. All this priceless uh, okay. necromantic knowledge. Uh, okay, yeah, so you have control Ooh. over that if you'd like to move it. Can I do that and like hit both both of the... Well, that's Solomon, so I wouldn't. He's your friend. I don't My know bad. if you want to hit I'm him. I'm sorry. I'm dumb. I'm sorry. That was that's okay. Uh, oh, yeah. So fucked. you can put it a whole lot of places that don't hit anyone but her. Uh, the, yeah. Also, the other vampire's dead there. there so, um, okay. okay, that works. So she has to make a uh, deck save. We'll just move this. Bloop, bloop, bloop. Uh, she's got to make a dexterity saving throw. What is your DC? Fifteen. Sixteen. Your spell safe. It's at the bottom of the. No, oh, that's counter spell. That's me. I'm that's sorry. You. Okay, yours is 15. So 13 fails. Uh, that is 8d6. Who boy? So do I just roll the 8d6? Yes. Okay. Oh, here we go. Oh, oh boy. Okay. Okay, what six plus this? three plus two plus two plus six plus three plus six plus six. Damn, 34. Is that right? That's what I got. One. I got 34. Yeah, that's what I got. Okay. Yeah. So that looks like 34. We we're all in agreement. Okay. Yay. So yeah, did they you. Did make the save? They did not make the save. Nice. Uh, I was a 13. Versus 15. So, uh, yeah, so you launch this fireball and you can tell that uh, Kalaga is like more unsteady in this body is more degraded uh, than the previous one. Um, and at the end of your turn, Enna, Kalaga, getting desperate, is going to use a legendary action to oh. return your fireball. So 
Let's see. Oh boy, I think I can get everybody. Oh Hang on. come on. Oh. Uh, let's see. Come on, give yeah. it to me. So oh. I think she uh, <laughs> she can <laughs> drop a fireball oh, right on my God. all the rest of you. Yeah, almost yes. perfectly, really. <laughs> so I'd like a wow. dexterity saving throw from everybody. That is going to be oh, DC my 14 God. dex save. Everybody within right. 10 feet of Solomon gets plus four. So that's going to be Shanty Thank and Silas. You. you get plus four to that. I am Thank so you. sorry. Well, it's not so your fireball. Your fault, she just has fireball. She can just do that. That's That wasn't uh, a... Uh, rude. That okay, that, what are we okay. rolling? It's a DC 14 dexterity saving throw versus... <clears throat> If I'm burning DM inspiration to reroll it. You know what? She's going to use this at fourth level. I'm going to give her this back. She's going to do a fourth level, and I'm going to roll an extra D6. Okay. All right. So if you got less than 14, you take 27, 28, 29, 33. 30. You take 33 points of damage. Can I burn my inspiration to redo that? Yes, if you would like. Uh... This doesn't have the plus four automatically added, right? So no, you'll have to add those well. manually. Yeah, so you'll have 16. To add those so that's a sixteen. Okay, we get it. We good. Okay, so who? So if you fail, you take what did I say? Thirty-three points of damage. If you succeed, you take sixteen. Sixteen. Yeah, you take sixteen points oh. of damage. <sighs> not, uh, bad, fire not bad. Damage. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Okay. Roz is still alive. And Miss Yuna DM. Yes. I can use luck points for that too. You can to use luck roll? points if you would like. Yes. All you right. said the half is sixteen damage. Half is sixteen damage. If you succeed, okay. sixteen damage. If you fail, um, thirty-three. Thirty-three. Not bad. Not bad. Not bad. Okie oh, dokie. Jesus. Can I use all my luck points, or am yeah, I limited how sure. many I, I can use? I think you can use. use more than one. So on that's a one. Well, yeah, I'd actually. No, you can. Don't, you can. I don't, I don't you can use as say. many yeah. as you want. Actually, that's how the feed is written. Wait, don't you have evasion? As a rogue Me? at level seven? Uh, yeah, level seven rogue. You should have evasion, which means you do take half damage, and if you succeed this save, you'll take no damage. All right. So if you keep well, one, if you want to keep it. burning luck okay, points, you so can. You I might take it, nothing. But half damage is what? Half 16. damage is sixteen. Sixteen. Full damage okay, is thirty-three. I've burned one luck point. I want to burn one more before okay. I. Well, now wait a minute. I'll go ahead and take. If I take the evasion, I only. Uh, no, if I take. If I use evasion, I take half damage. Yeah. So evasion but if says. If I succeed on it, I can take no yeah, damage. Right. So evasion says if you would normally take full damage from this, you get to take half damage instead. And if you pass it, you take no damage. So it's All up right, to you what I've you want to do with that. I've used one luck point. Because it's how many how many points of damage do we take? Thirty three if you fail, sixteen if you pass. So sixteen for you, zero if you pass. Because okay, of evasion. sixteen would knock me down to like eight. So I'm going to try one more, and it's a dexterity I'm shooting for. Yes, that is correct. Oh my god! Oh, oh my god! Two luck points in. That's a Have not rolled points. above an eleven. And you have a okay. plus eight to this. You I save on like a my seven. Third luck point. Okay. I'll take the thirteen. You said, tell me again. Sixteen I'm sorry. damage. Sixteen, 16 damage. 20. All right. Well, Perdita is still on her feet. Okay. Uh, all right. So, uh, yeah, that was a legendary action at the end of Anna's turn. Uh, that brings us to this uh, vampire spawn, which is going to continue to crawl up the wall. Uh, Roz, you have a reaction to cast Thunderwave. Yes, DC is 15. Okay. It is under the effects of Vicious Mockery, which means it has disadvantage on its That is save. not correct. No? It's disadvantage on attack on its next attack roll, but I don't think it has anything to do with saves. Unless you have something special that makes your Vicious Mockery do that. Is it only attack rolls? Uh, yeah, it's on its next attack roll. Uh, yeah, okay. Well, yeah. Uh, nope, I don't have anything special. Okay, uh, that is a 17 on the con save. So that does make the save. Uh, so it takes half damage and is not yeeted off the side of the building. Lucky for it. Uh, how much damage is that total? Half damage would be 12 damage. 12 damage. Okay. 12 thunder damage. Okay, 12 thunder damage. Um, and it gains... So it hasn't taken radiant damage this turn. It gains some hit points back at the beginning of its turn. Uh, okay, uh, it continues to come up the wall. 
Ha -da 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 -da. So it's going to go diagonally five feet over now that you're there, Perdita. Uh, and then five feet was when it got hit. So it's it was 15 feet down. So it basically uses all of its movement to get in here and stand up from prone. Uh, and this thing is going to attack Perdita because you're the closest one. Ooh, I got a 25 to hit. And that certainly hit. Okay, uh, it is going to grapple you, Perdita, and bear its fangs, preparing for its attack. Oh, it has disadvantage. It has disadvantage, doesn't Nicely it? Nicely done, yep. Uh, so it would, it, there's an alternate universe where it didn't get Vicious Mockery, where it uh, grabs you, but in this one, uh, it goes to grab at you, but uh, is unsteady. It, like, trips over a piece of broken rubble, and its claws miss, and is unable to latch onto you. Uh, that brings us back to Solomon. Solomon kind of sighs with uh, haste, still active. And he's going to make his way back down <laughs> and make three more attacks. Okay. Uh -huh. That, Come what on. the fuck are you Come talking on. about? I don't under, that, that cannot be real. Nat 20, nat 20. That baby. cannot be real. Silas really, <laughs> or Solomon really hates What are you friends. talking like, about? Really mad. I don't. <laughs> wow! Stop making wow. us do all this mess. I don't. I don't oh understand. You have critted her every time you've all, hit all the damage. Oh, oh the hold on! Later. Before before he makes that attack, I was going to bonus action hunter's mark. Is that uh, is that okay? Um, I'm going to say no, because you forgot, okay. and I'm going to hold you to okay. it. If you're going to bring okay. out every rule against me, I am going to hold you to that. You will not be able to Hunter's uh, Mark until after you've taken all of your attacks, because that's how the attack action works. Well, smite is a plot. Yeah, so. smite you can do when you know you've hit, so. God, I don't... That just doesn't make any sense. How in God's name have you critted every attack against this woman? So it's that's wild. An extra... We are entering astronomical odds here. We truly are. So that's an extra eight for Radiant. So, yeah. 29 plus 26. That's 55. Oh, my eight. God. 63 just off what's on the screen. Plus okay. 1d8. Plus 1d8 eight plus radiant. 8. Radiant. Right. Okay, so you said uh, okay. Uh, so so Solomon. Okay, roll plus a seven, right? I for did. your it plus seven for your two. thing. Yeah, right? plus seven. Yep. Plus two plus eight. Yeah. God. How many divine smites you pumping in there? Uh I've only popped one. I have enough to finish out the rest of my attacks with divine smite. Good Lord. <laughs> Do it! Just do it! Okay. Um, well, this was anticlimactic because she's down again and she's out of body. Yeah! So. <laughs> wow! <laughs> yes! So, uh. Solomon, so Solomon's going to make a slash severing the creature's arms to where it can't defend itself. And he's going to pick it up by the neck and he's going to say to it, this time I'm going to make sure you're dead. And he's going to let his radiant energy burn the rest of it away. Okay. All right. Uh, you still got two attacks if you can get anywhere else. Uh, how much movement did I use from here? Uh, you were here, so... I have feet. 30 more feet. Ah, mm. Just run up and throw the sword. Bonus action. I'm going to drop the radiant... Uh, radiant consumption. I'm going to move right here and I'm going to chuck a javelin with a smite on it at the vampire. Okay. No, it's melee attack. I don't think I can smite. Yeah, you can't a smite yeah I don't think you can smite. You can't throw one. You can't throw a javelin. A javelin uh, you can. You, there are certain smites you can use on a javelin. I don't remember. I don't. Which I don't think it's divine smite. I think divine smite specifies melee attack. Right. It's, yeah. it's the spell smites. But okay. I used my bonus action to end. Okay. Uh, thing. Sure. So I'm just uh, gonna yeah. launch a javelin at it. All right. Just sixteen hit. Uh, sixteen hits. Yes. For. I can't Seven. smite. Ignore the thirteen. Yeah, I got you. Okay. Okay, uh, so you launch a javelin, which uh, smashes into this thing. 
This one is dead. Shanty, you're up. Perfect. Sorry. I had another okay, attack. Okay. It's okay. I'm done. Oh, um, done. yeah. I don't think you can get out another javelin, though. Unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. Like you're your, right. Your object interactions are tapped. Uh, okay. I just want to say the probability of rolling three nat twenties in a row on those attacks on that woman. I mean, you rolled other stuff, but getting those three nat twenties like that is about one in eight thousand. <laughs> Oh, we are truly seeing the worst possible timeline for Calga Lifebane here. <laughs> uh, sorry, continue. Okay, so uh, Shanty, did I hit the button too early? I did. Let me pop, 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 pop. Okay, Shanty, you're up. Okie dokie. Uh, so I'd like to go ahead and uh, cast Healing Spirit. It's a bonus action. Okay. And uh, pull it up real quick. And it puts like a five foot space, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, and I'm going to go ahead and direct that uh, in Roz's area, if okay. I could. What's the What is the text of, of Healing Spirit? Can you put that in chat? Sorry. Me? Yeah, absolutely. I'm just pulling it up right now. That's Sorry. Good. Nope, wrong one. Sorry. I have like five healing spells and I keep losing them. In the That's right. Right here. Okay. There we go. A five foot cube. Yes. Uh, okay, so a five foot is a five foot cube just one square, or it's is just it... one tile? Yeah, yeah, I guess it's kind of how I interpreted it. I don't know, confusing, it is a little bit. Sorry, I'm I'm just gonna go through uh, da, 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 da. No, it's cool. Okay, yeah. So hang on, we're gonna shrink this down. Okay, so healing spirit. Excuse you, healing spirit. You are a cube. Um Okay, you have control over that. Uh just put it wherever you want. Alright, I'm gonna put it here with our friends and the uh putting it here. Oh Oh, you're on the you're on the measure tool. Yeah, I, I figured it out. I'm sorry. Oh, it's all good. Still Pretty much just use this with y'all. So okay. <laughs> the learning curve is steep. Uh, uh, until the spell ends, creature moves into the spirit space. You can cause that. Okay. Cool. Cool. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and cast this at a level three. Uh, so it's going to okay. be 2d6 healing. Okay. And that and is conjure. That's concentration for you, right? Uh, yep. It's concentration. And uh, we're going to focus on Perdita right now. Okay. Uh, so do you want to just put it in Perdita's space and that way? Oh, sure. I can do that. Just go Ooh. off. Okay, cool. Uh, and I believe it will happen on Perdita's turn when she starts. That's correct. Yes. Yeah, that's how it's written. Okay, cool. Okay, sorry. Very good. That's all right. Uh, okay, so you cast Healing Spirit. That is a bonus action. Any actions yep. you want to take? Uh, yes. Uh, let's see. Are there any other corpses in this room? <laughs> the well, on the table. Um, there's normal corpses. No, there's the one vampire. Her both of her bodies have sort of saltified, uh, and the vampire's missing a head. So I don't okay. know. But if you want to make an arcana check to see if you like what oh, you yes, what your read on this is, you can. Actually, that would be outstanding. Thank you. Um, pulling it up now. Oh. Well. 14. Okay. Sorry. That is okay. Um, yeah, I think with a 14, I don't think this is necessarily anything you had uh, run into before. I think you're not totally sure. It. You don't see any of the bodies for, bodies for her to, like, take over. Um, but you also don't know like what the source, if, if that does it, if she's just done now that she, there's no board bodies or if there's something else going on, I think with 14, you're not quite sure. Right. Fair enough. Okay. Uh, well, let's see, since that was a bonus action. Oh wait, no, never mind. This concentration. Okay. Just kidding. I'm going to go ahead and, and just hang out here. It's in my turn. Okay. Um, cool. Well, that is the end of a round. And I think Taylor has asked that we uh, take a quick break. <laughs> So uh, before we jump into this next round of combat, uh, we are going to take a quick break, guys. So uh, hang tight for a few minutes 
and we will be back shortly. Okay, welcome back, everybody. Um, sorry, I forgot to tell you how long we were going to be gone. Uh, we just took a quick five minute break there. Um, and that was the end of Shanty's turn. Uh, as you had used your bonus action to cast healing spirit. I guess, Shanty, you still have your action. Is there anything you wanted to do with that? Oh, yeah, I guess so. That, that uh, arcana check see. was not your action. That's my bad. Oh, okie dokie. That sounds good. Um, I am sorry. I did not come up with anything. Oh, that's <laughs> okay. You don't necessarily have to do anything. No, that's uh, okay. you don't see uh, anything particular to do. Um... Yes. So I'll go ahead and scooch up a little bit here, and then, uh, I can still... Well, you've cast a spell, so you can cast cantrips, uh, or you can make attacks. You could probably wild shape if you wanted to, um, or do your spore form. No, I don't know actually, what else you would have actions I can do. No, I think I'm good, okay. actually. So, yeah, okay. Thanks. Very good. Uh, Roz, you're up. All right, folks. Let's give Roz a hand as she attempts to make two attacks. Okay. Actually, you know, you know what? Uh, no, if Roz is going to go for another Thunder Wave. I want to push this thing out the window. Okay. I I wanted the to itsy, do it the, the first time. Spider went out the water. Let's do this. Uh, bonus action, Vicious Mockery, just because I'm spiteful. Okay. So that is I a only do this save. because I am spiteful. Yes, that is a DC 15 wisdom save. She got a 14. <laughs> five points of psychic damage. Right, minus five. We'll give her her little disadvantage thing, which I had made this little scared thing. Okay. You are lucky I'm a little out of breath and only casting this at third level. That is okay. a third level DC 15 constitution save thunder wave. Okay, con save. Oh, that's a nat one. That is a natural <laughs> one. Uh, okay, so that is 28. 28 points of thunder damage okay. from the Hisker's And Yowl. she is blasted how far here? I think it's... 10 feet. Yeah. Uh, whoo! <laughs> okay, uh, so she... F well, I guess I, don't, I actually didn't specify the orientation or whatever of this creature. Uh... The vampire spawn falls out the window, uh, hits the ground, and stops moving, um, taking us for the moment out of initiative. So, you guys solve my necromancer puzzle. Solomon's gonna go bless the remains of both of the bodies, just to be sure. Uh, yeah, sure. So, Good uh, call. make a religion check, actually. <clears throat> Alright, religion. 21. Uh, yeah, these things need to be either burned or staked. I mean, the, the head decapitation is, is, is a great move. Maybe that'll stick. Uh, but you probably want to either burn or stake them. Do you say that out loud? Yes. Uh, Solomon conveys that. Okay. Good to know. Silas will immediately walk to the um, window where Roz and um, Rodita are and just start chucking firebolts at the one on the ground. Okay. Yeah, it's it relatively easy. Fire. It'll it'll catch fire pretty quickly. Yeah. Uh, we can we can do that sort of narratively. No check needed. Uh, okay. Yeah. So you burn that one up. Um, uh, what else would you guys like to do as you stand here in the can top of our and Sorry, check to see if uh, Miss uh, I keep coming back to life is actually dead or not, or is that out of reach? Sure, yeah, go ahead and make an arcana check. It's ten. a 10 minus, yeah. Yeah, that, you're not sure. That's not really your area of expertise. You know a good <clears throat> nope. bit about undead in general, but like this is like, that's more like, oh, ghouls and gas and whites and ghosts and maybe even banshees and stuff. But like necromancers doing because like you've never heard of a necromancer doing stuff like this, like dying and then taking over a new body like that. She's clearly doing some weird experimental stuff that you have no idea about. Um, Can I check the room with an arcana check to see what's here? Sure. Yeah. And I might burn inspiration with this if I roll low because I want to know. Is is there a top to this mm. tower? 
Yes, the tower is not exposed on top to the sky, no. Could Roz climb outside and get on top to see what's yeah. up there? I mean, you have a climbing speed, so I don't think you need to make athletic. And there's no, like, time sensitivity. I think there were some athletics checks we made previously, because it was like, how well can you get up in time with everybody else? But I think, you know, at this point, you can just climb it. It might take a few minutes, but. Does the 12 get me anywhere? Um, again, not exactly. No, like you're looking around, you see on this table, there's a bunch of, you know, spell casting implements and research materials and all kinds of stuff. But like in just a cursory glance, like it, your first impression, you're not really sure. Um, you'd have to sit at, you'd either have to roll better, uh, or sit and really look at everything to kind of get a sense of what's going on here. Yeah. Then I want to try to take some time with it. Okay. Who's, uh, and I don't mean to keep butting in, but uh, Solomon's looking around. Who's worse for wear? Well, I didn't get, did I get the thing from, um, you know, the thing when I, I didn't get to start my my turn, that healing square thing. Uh, yes. Yeah. So that lasts for what? 10 minutes or a minute. How long does that last? Um, concentration yeah, up to a minute. So if you. Yep. So if you guys want to trade out, that is 10 rounds. So there's uh, 10. It can only 10 of heal D6s. a number of times. One plus uh, Shanty's spell casting ah, ability. Okay. So I had six on deck. Um, so there's six 2d6 heals that can be spread around. Yes. And so you guys can hop okay. in and out of the thing if you want. So would that mean we could all get one? Well, yeah, so you were already going to get one anyway, so you definitely get the first one, which is going to give you eight hit points. Um, Perdita. It's as, so I get eight You more? get eight hit points, eight. and then as mm -hmm. far as the rest of the six go, I'm going to just need you guys to decide how those are distributed and do that. Um, er, yeah. The reason why I ask is because I still have like 25 points to lay on hands. Yeah. Yes, um, uh, Jesse. No, just Silas really. Uh, see shit. Silas is really beat up. So yeah. cool. Okay. All right. Um, and I can actually move my fake critter. Can I just go ahead and do that? Yeah. Sure. Whatever cool. you want. Uh, I said twenty five. It's twenty four. So uh, okay. Silas healed twenty four HP. Okay. Nice. Thank you. So Silas gets twenty four more HP. Uh, yeah. Roz is really low. Perdita is still pretty low. That brought me Perfect. to full exactly. Believe it or okay. not. Okay. Uh, and Solomon is somewhat low. I'll just tell you from looking at the stats here because i can see everybody all right yes solomon heal the count he needs it as he only has one life i however have many <laughs> <laughs> coughs up a bloody purple um let's see i'm on it sorry no it's all good just yeah just let people know as you kind of get things figured out yeah uh, what oops they get. i hit that Okay, uh, so Raz, that is six back. I know you're fine, but here's some anyway. Thank you. You are welcome, precious. Uh, and then, let's see, who else is Leighton? Anna, how you doing, friend? Uh, Anna's pretty okay. I only she only took sixteen damage, so she's she's pretty okay. Well, you're gonna get some healing anyway. Okay. Well, let's, it, can it just everybody say who they're how many health points they have and then we know who need is it the most yes that's true uh how I, do you doing perdita? Uh, perdita has 16 okay after yeah after because yeah, after, after, after i was down to eight and then you gave me eight so where is anybody okay. else stand i'm at 18 oh, okay and then solomon needs some okay. Okay. yeah i was, I was saying this was you before you guys were coming back y'all needed all those crits <laughs> <laughs> apparently mm, yeah Thanks. it was okay. that was actually uh, a pretty close fight nobody went down but like half you guys got pretty close to getting wrecked well and i right. was terrified if we went down that thing was going to move into us well then uh, would yeah. i do that yeah Bertita. oh mr well. strahd <laughs> Are you doing it to me again, or is somebody else? Doing yes, time. I think she's doing it again. No, this is this is for you. I just didn't want to interrupt what people were saying. So I'm going to go ahead and actually give these both to you, and then I'll use another spell for Solomon. Uh, okay. okay, so you've got another six. Six. Okay, that gets me up to twenty-four. And then no, that my gets me up to twenty-two. Okay. Thank you. And, of course. And then my creatures dissipated. 
And then, let's see, doop a doop a doo. And then I'm gonna go ahead and use Cure Wounds on you at a level two. Uh, so that's 2d8. Oh no, I have to spell safe. You have to spell safe? No, no I was making oh, a joke. Okay. Oh, I'm, sorry. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I wasn't paying attention at all. All right, perfect. All right, there oh, you go. And 13. Kylo, if you click on the spell's name, uh, mm -hmm. it should allow you to uh, designate what level you cast it at. And I think theoretically it would calculate the damage or whatever for yeah you. it's like in the oh, spell sheet okay. you have your little text bubble thing which posts the text of the spell in chat but if you click on the name it usually pulls up a pop-up menu sometimes on top of your sheet sometimes behind it it's kind of weird like that sometimes but you can specify the spell level and sometimes it will roll uh okay for you. so it, <sighs> okay i will try that next time it so far hasn't done that um but i will i will do the sure. thing maybe it's just 20 is finicky sometimes dumb. right there's yeah is huge learning curve. Yeah. Don't worry. I'm about sorry. It. No, you're good. <laughs> no, I feel so Don't bad. Worry it holds about up it. action. Okay. Uh, and then let's see. So it's I, I'm sorry. So it's actually 13. It's 18 because it's plus my modifier. Okay. So, so there's 18 points for Solomon in total. Yep. Uh, Roz, you healed something for five. Was you were you healing yourself there or something else? Yeah. Roz mutters to herself. Okay. Uh, it's not that bad, and heals herself for five. Okay. Cool. Uh, all right, well, that's some healing there. Uh, you guys can do more if you want to keep spending slots and stuff, but let's deal with, like, you guys investigating this place. Um, so what is everybody doing? So Silas is going to take some time. We'll deal with your check here in a minute. Um, what about everyone else? What would you like to do? Can I use my uh, divine sense to maybe uh, gain advantage to see if Lady Face is dead or not? Maybe, kind of, mm. sort of. There's the ability. Yeah, I would think that would work. Um, and let me look at the adventure well, here real quick. Technically, I think I would know without a a think. Well, Roz would like to see what yeah. is further up the tower. But that can wait until <laughs> sure. everyone's figured it out. Yeah, so yeah, as cool. for the divine sense, uh, Solomon, um, you uh, can sense that um, there is some, some, there's like some sort of undead presence that is still in uh, Kalaga's body. And I think that is what you can tell. Right. Uh, no un location of any undead fiend or celestial within 60 feet is not behind total cover. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you still get like uh, an active whiff of undead off of Caliga, but it's like you that like, uh, you know, sort of black uh, necromantic energy that was like flowing around into that other body um, is ha like hasn't come out of her. If you can, as far as you can tell. Um, so whatever it is, is still sort of in there. Mm. Solomon's gonna convey that to Silas. <clears throat> um, should we throw it out the window and set it on fire? I mean, it's basically a pile of salt. What else are we gonna do with it? Does anybody... We could dissolve it. <laughs> The only way that I would. Yeah, is there acid on the table? That's what uh, Perdita wanted to do. Was in, I was going to say was investigate everything on that table. To sure. See if yeah. Could... If you guys want to go ahead and take the time to look more into that, uh, one of you can give the help action, or both of you can do investigation checks. Uh, whatever you would like to do. Roz is going to hand Silas a jar of her own urine. <laughs> of course. Will this do? Well, Perdido wants to investigate that table to see if there's anything there that she thinks could uh, you want to roll tell us anything. Ones? But she would rather help somebody who has who who is more magical than she is. I got a plus eight. 
I have a plus five. Can I just help him? Yeah, sure. Uh, you can roll with advantage. 22. 22. Okay. Uh, yeah, with a 22, you're looking at this, and you think you could probably whip up... Uh, she has, like, a full array of alchemical supplies. You could probably whip up a, a concoction, you know, that would do just about any sort of magical or semi-magical effect that you are trying to look to do here. I mean, you know, it's all aimed at, like, necromancy and negative stuff, but, like, it depends on exactly what you're trying to accomplish, but there is a bunch of alchemical stuff here, yeah. Uh, not just on the table, but also all of these shelves around the walls and these shelves next to the table all have, like, bottles and, like, eyeballs and tongues and toenails and, you know, essence of newt liver and God knows what else, yeah. right? So so Silas is going to go <clears throat> eye of newt, leg of newt, rest of newt, <laughs> and uh, put together a... Uh, a, a solution essentially for dissolving as as much as possible and just like pick up the dust and drop it in okay um all right make and and Anita is going to say that new that note almost looked like it had gangrene you know as in newt gangrene <laughs> ba -ba 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 -ba. okay silas uh make an arcana check if you wouldn't mind 16. 16. Okay. Yeah, I think on a 16, you are able to concoct something that you think would um, dissolve or dispel any ongoing magical effects. Like, it's you put a bunch of caustic stuff together that is, like, very um, used to, like, abjure and dispel other magical effects. Um, and you, uh, you think that this would probably uh, do away with whatever is going on here. So, uh, well, to that effect, then I'm going to cast detect magic, <coughs> um, cause I can do that at will with my ability and see, um, if I can see a necromantic essence coming from sure. So one thing you notice is that the ashes that have collected, uh, in the, around that, like the, the, the salt ashes, whatever, uh, are sort of laying on what remains of Kalaga's original clothes because that's where they were uh, sort of hanging out. Uh, and you can actually tell, the first thing off the bat is that the cloak uh, that uh, Kalaga was wearing is magical. Oh, excellent. Uh, I will cast Identify. Okay. With my one free of the day. Okay. Uh, so you cast Identify. Badoom. Badoom. Um, there you go. Uh, it is a cloak of the bat. Uh, oh shit! Yeah, nice. So there is the text of cloak of the bat. While wearing this cloak, you have advantage on dexterity ch stealth checks in an area of dim light or darkness. You can grip the edges of the cloak with both hands and use it to fly at a speed of forty feet. If you ever fail to grip the cloak's edges while flying this way, you are no longer in dim light or dark. Or if you're no longer in dim light or darkness, you lose the flying speed. While um, wearing the cloak in an area of dim light, you can use your action to cast Polymorph, transforming into a bat. While you are in the form of the bat, you retain Intelligence, Wisdom, and Charisma, which is unlike the normal Polymorph spell. Uh, that Then the cl cloak cannot be used that way until the next dawn. Okay, so um, first off, I don't tell anybody yet. Um, and I'm going to just kind of like look at it and be like, what do you guys think? Does it look nice and kind of put it on myself? Um, and then you hear Silas go, ah, 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 I'm turning into a vampire, and then turn into a bat and like start flying around. <laughs> the room. Okay, so how does everyone else react to Silas uh, putting on this cloak and turning into a bat? Well, I guess I better kill it. Uh, 16 performance <laughs> check. I'm pretty good. Her yeah, I'd say it's, her, uh, I guess everyone make an insight check if you don't mind. <laughs> Okay, Roz clocks this at the 19. Renita reaches for her bow, but she hasn't fired it yet, but she readies the bow. Yeah, uh, Solomon definitely thinks this is real. Uh, Shanti with a 17 figures it out. Anna with a 19 figures it out. <laughs> Solomon's going to run after it with his great sword. Uh, Perdita I'm, I'm definitely thinks. Um, yeah. 
Perdita wrote it, got a nat one. Okay. Uh, yeah. Well, so Solomon would get an attack of opportunity as you go, Silas. So. Well, I figured I was next to the cloak, right? I'm like down. Oh here yeah, you are over there. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So uh, you do get up out of range, but uh, so Perdita, what do you got? I think it's he really turned into a bat, right? Yeah, I, I mean, a, you've I been deceived by this performance. And I'd already said I pulled my bow out, so I think I shoot at him with my bow. Okay. <laughs> All right, make an attack roll. <laughs> Let me get my character back up here. Uh, uh, short bow. Shapes. Oh, that's a 20 to hit. <laughs> I mean, no! I don't know what a bad stats are, but that, that I think hits that probably sure. hits. Yeah, hang on. Let me... Yeah. Uh, no. Let me find the. There's monsters. Do I have a bat in here? No, of course I don't. <laughs> don't worry about it. We'll use oh, we're, oh, we're worrying about it. <laughs> I mean, the bat he has was. one hit point. The bat has sure. one hit point for sure. Uh, but yeah. we got to know it's AC, although it can't be higher than twenty. It has AC twelve and one hit point. Yeah. So I just drop out of the sky as Solomon. <laughs> yeah. So you drop out of the sky. How high up did you go, Solomon? Uh, no, like twenty feet. Twenty feet. Try to get okay. up to Solomon's oh range. God. So you are gonna take some falling yeah. damage. <laughs> <laughs> you take four points of bludgeoning damage as you fall and kind of bonk on the edge of the shelf a little bit and land prone. So <laughs> does, is it still a bat? No. Uh, <laughs> when he's hit by poly, when, the polymorph ends when he drops to zero hit points, I believe. Yeah. But so the gasp and is very angry and goes over to him and says, what the hell were you doing? I was joking <laughs> he's just like i just don't think when we almost get killed in one room that you should joke even if you are the high and mighty count of everything all right do you and want Perita this is stomping downstairs she is embarrassed and angry uh-oh and, and when she Perdita. gets downstairs she's gonna look in the other room the highest jinx okay uh yeah so perdita uh huffily stomps downstairs um to investigate Solomon the other room, at... which I think you guys have already investigated. Sorry, uh, go ahead. Sorry. Uh, Solomon looks at Silas and he goes, I was going to cut you in half. That would have been funny. Anna just says, I have a talking m mouse. Like, come on. <laughs> yeah, come on. <laughs> Shanty's well... just going <laughs> to... Shant is just going to go, I'm not healing you anymore, and just walk downstairs after Perdita. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So Shanty's in the other room. But Solomon will offer Silas a hand up. though. So. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. And uh, yeah, you still have the body of this necromancer to deal with with your newt based uh, potion here. Uh, what about Anna and Roz? What are you guys up to? Roz wants to see. The next floor up wants to climb out. The that's window right. That's right. Okay. Uh, yeah, Roz, you climb up. Um, it's it's pretty straightforward. It's actually it's just like the roof of the tower. So it's like shingles that kind of come to a point. There's like a spire up there, uh, but there's no more like space where there's there's no storage. There's no like extra floors. It's just kind of the roof of the tower, and it's is in pretty a, poor repair. But um, is there a weather vane or anything up here? Uh, that's a luck check, I guess. Um, roll a D100. We'll say one to 50. Yes. 51 to a hundred. No, we'll say one to 50. No, 51 to a hundred. Yes. 35. So that's a no. Uh, nope. Just sort of a big spot. You probably see this to get the sense. There was like a pin in with like a, a flag that used to fly, but it's long since rotted and shredded out by the weather of several years. Uh, Roz would like to sort of unwrap, uh, this part of the headscarf that uh, she wraps around her helmet um, and attempt to tie it to whatever weather pole or, you know, pinion that she can just to okay. sort of fly a new flag that can be visible. Sure. To, uh, yeah, to I anyone. think you can do that. Uh, okay. Uh, so Anna, Solomon and Silas. So since Gurley changed, like took over this body, on the table it's not there anymore right right so she took it over and it okay. went back over to where she was and then died before she could turn into bat and fly out the window so okay okay that's, that's what basically what happened okay is this like a bookshelf right here yes those are uh two sets there's like four sets of bookshelves back to back there okay can enna Ugh. check those for anything 
Sure. Yeah. Make an investigation check. Cool. Twenty twenty two. Dang. Jeez. Okay. Cool. Um yeah, you actually do find hang on here. Um while I look something up. Okay, uh roll me a D four, Anna. If you don't mind. Two. Two. Okay. Um so you find um, a couple of things that aren't actually magical necessarily, but you find <clears throat> uh, you find an acid vial and oh. a flask of alchemist fire. Mm, okay. So if someone, cool. if you want to write those down in your character sheet, uh, that these are yeah. like pre-made alchemical cocktails that um, Silas was not really looking for because they wouldn't have helped you with this sort of like more necromantic stuff. Uh, because as you were looking at your stuff, Silas, you get the sense that like merely destroying the body physically would maybe not necessarily be enough and that you needed like more magical implementation for your stuff, which is why you gravitated more towards the like more potion ingredients versus these things, which were clearly stuff that she had made and was just kind of sitting on the shelf for her to use in various um, effects. So I'm going to okay. hand in the bottle of uh, cat piss that Roz gave me and just tell her I found one more. Just... <laughs> wow. Nice. Thank you. Oh, Thank boy. you so much. Nice. Exactly I burned a spell slot for that, by the way. That's 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 potent. <laughs> <laughs> uh, OK, what were the two things again? Uh, a vial of acid and a uh -huh. flask of alchemist fire. Yeah. Um. Which I guess I don't have handouts for those um, that I can give you. Hang on. I guess I can do this. We'll say vial of acid and we'll just give everybody access to this. Oop. Uh, and these things do specific stuff like these are mechanically. Uh actually items um and not just stuff i'm making up so uh but da, 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 da. Uh, so real quick we'll just get those in everybody's stuff here so you have access to them oh that's not the right thing need to grab this boom okay there we go. Uh, so those are some loot that you guys get. Vial of acid and flat and uh, the other thing. Also, um, I guess with that nat 20 as well, as you're looking around, um, I am going to go ahead and give you, you find a Caliga Lifebane spell book. <gasps> Ooh, cool. um, it won't really do you a lot of good, Anna. It's like a wizard thing, uh -huh. unfortunately. Uh, but Silas uh -huh. might get some mileage out of that. Uh, and then Silas and Solomon, um, you are working on this body. What do you do? You've got your newt concoction cooked up. Solomon's <laughs> going to stay quiet and watch for okay. now. I definitely want to see, like, you know, check the pockets of the cloak. Yeah. See if there's anything worthwhile in there, any money. <clears throat> um, you wands. find... Was she a you don't find any cast? wand or money. You do find some uh, papers, actually. Okay. Actually, you might have. Did you guys? I don't know if you found this on the previous page. Did I? Does anyone know? Did I tell you guys if you found a sheaf of parchment on the other floor, or did you? Did you invest? Did you guys investigate the the other floor very well? I think we really rushed did. up here. You did. Yeah, okay. Tried, so no, you you don't find downstairs. anything in the pockets. Not uh, yet. Yeah. Um. So yeah, the, the cloak is empty. It was just basically her cloak. I mean, yeah, it might yeah. have like spell components, but you use a wand, so you don't really need them. Yeah. So um, yeah, just making sure there's nothing on her, <clears throat> and then um, I'll tell Solomon. Um, how did you how did you cut this one? Um, did you cut I mean, this one's head off, or they're both they're both pretty much piles of ash. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> Then yeah, I'm just gonna take what we made and kind of like put put as much ash as I can into a pile and just dump it on top and 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, so you sort of gather up as much of this salty ash as you can and, and put it into this concoction that you've put together with her alchemical supplies. Uh, and you can see as you do, there there is this brown, brown this uh, not brown, this like bl- dark sludge that kind of begins to like seep into the concoction. Um, and uh, it kind of begins to like coalesce and form. And there's like a brief moment where it actually forms fully into the body of a newt. Uh, which sort of like quickly like looks around and tries to like swim for the edge of the thing. One yellow eye sort of blearing at you before uh, you see this like um, purplish energy begin to seep back into the newt and start to break it apart and its whole body just like dissolves. And the last thing is that the yellow eye sort of like sinks under the concoction and then sort of like into this like the purple and the yellow sort of make this kind of like greenish aqua looking color as it sort of like dissolves uh, and then there's like a bit of a snap like a like a popping sound and you feel like you probably have uh dispelled whatever effect this was and uh dealt with the whole caliber caliber life paint situation uh divine sense would tell you if you still have that up solomon that uh there is no more undead presence in the tower at least within 60 feet of you not behind total cover <clears throat> i'm going to uh summon charlie <clears throat> okay. And I'm going to kind of take a cork and cap whatever we've kind of made and just tell him, okay, um, I need you to take this, take it as far away as possible, dump it in a river. And then when you're done with that, come back. Okay. Uh yeah, Charlie flies off with the uh like grabs the little pot in his uh talons, uh, and it sort of like swings the with the lid on it as he flies away. Uh, sort of like heavily he's not used to like carrying burdens like this he's a little owl so it's he's he's struggling but he gets some distance away from the tower and begins to carry out your orders um anything else from uh silas solomon or Roz before we skip down to or enna before we skip down to shanty and perdita on the other Uh, floor did i see enna grab the spell book uh i don't know that's up to enna i think I'm going to I'm going to walk over to Silas and and I'm going to give him the spell book. Oh, okay. yeah. I'm I was going to trade you. What? For another jar of piss. <laughs> Ow, yo, <laughs> I will. I will reach into my cloak and pull out the magenta top hat that I the magenta top hat that I found downstairs and put it on in his head. Thank you. I accept. No. All right. That's Peace cute. has been made. Uh yeah, so you have that spell book. It has Kala's spells in it, um, some of which you probably don't know. Um, so you would have to spend the requisite money and ink and all that stuff yep. to copy them and time and all those things. Uh, but you would have time to do that uh once you get kind of back to uh town. In the meantime, elsewhere, uh Shanty and Perdita on the second floor, I believe, yeah, you guys had fought the rug but i don't think you had time to really investigate the um the floor very much the last time you were down here because you knew what was waiting for you on the third floor uh what would y'all like to do well perdita is still very angry and still very Mm -hmm. embarrassed but that kind of makes her even more focused trying to get away from what happened upstairs and so she wants to investigate the room very carefully and see what she can find and uh so she's going to look all over the room okay uh yeah you see sort of a uh a desk over here Mm -hmm. um and next to the desk you see a little locked chest Well, um, it I make want to a, search both. Yeah, make an investigation check. But I also have, don't I have, do I have those tools for lock? No, I don't. Okay. Thieves, investigation. Thieves tools? Yeah, you have thieves tools. All right. Investigation. I'm doing that one first. Okay. Um, and I'm so angry that I rolled in that one and got myself a right. six. Uh, yeah, so if you're investigating the bed over there, uh, the bed clothes, I guess I said you killed a rug in the recap. It actually wasn't a rug. It was the bed clothes were enchanted as a rug of smothering. Uh, so you guys had killed that. Uh, so they are now inert and filled with holes. Um, 
and there's nothing else of interest on the bed. It's just like weird and moldy. Uh, you probably don't get the sense anyone's actually really slept in it for a long time. Uh, Fair but enough. being undead, Calica probably didn't sleep. So this is probably left over from like whatever was going on here before uh, the necromancer took over. Okie dokie. Um, well, then is there. Let me see. Well, I looked in the desk and I didn't see anything, but I'm still very angry. But I'm going to try to open this chest with my thieves tools if you want to search behind me. Of course. Okay. And I would like to use my thieves tools and attempt to open the locked chest. Okay. Yeah. Uh, make a thieves tools check. Now, let's see. Does that mean I hit the thing that says thieves tools? Yes. And it'll ask you what ability score you want to do uh, dexterity. It will. Where is it going to ask me that? I don't know. Probably I... under your sheet. It, it tends to pop up underneath. Uh, I didn't. That's what. Yeah. It, did, it didn't do oh, it. Oh, time. not thieves tools. So, not the thieves tools in your equipment. There's a proficiency on the left side of your sheet, like two or three boxes under where your main stats are. Uh, that should all say right, these tools. Hold on a minute. I closed out and lost my sheet. And all right, there we are. <clears throat> Can I go ahead and grant Perdita inspiration? Sure. Cool. All right. So you're ah uh, over there. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so how? What does it look like as Shanty tries to inspire? And you Perdita? said what attribute should I be using? Uh, dexterity. Dexterity. Thank you. Okay. So I think. Sh- Shanty would probably just pull out her her pan flute and try to just like play a little song, just like very quietly, knowing Perdita's annoyed. But well, and that's going to help me very much. You know, they say that music fills the savage beast, and well, I am feeling a little savage. But you're helping me so much, Shanty, and thank you. And as a result of that, I'm going to do very well with my thieves' tools, and I rolled a twenty-two. Yeah, uh, twenty-two will do it. You see, as you uh, pick the lock, um, that. Uh, you are able to pick the lock. However, unfortunately, uh, your Nat 1 investigation did not reveal, and I think you forgot from earlier, that the chest is trapped. Uh, So I need you to make a dexterity saving throw, please. Oh, no. All right. I rolled a 16. Okay, Uh, I think 16, yeah, that saves, so... You're going to take half damage from this. So you take half of 33 damage, which is 15, 16. Um, But you made your deck save. So you take no damage because you have evasion. Hey, look at that. Uh, So as Perdita, as you are, um, and let me just check the text of the trap to make sure it's just the creature trying to unlock it or mess with it. And it's not an A- See, uh, da, 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 da. yeah, just the creature opening the check. So you uh, can t- you as you're picking the lock, just before you pop the final pin on it, you uh, see this quick spark, and you realize that you have begun to like pop this trap and jerk your hands back really quickly as this small electric shock uh, that would have hurt you quite badly. Uh, Actually, you evade it quickly enough to not uh, take the damage from that. And then your uh, your Thieves Tools check is high enough. You manage to pop that thing open and uh, ruin my plan to, you know, uh, hurt you badly. <laughs> Would have damn near killed me. So uh, in there, uh, you find... Um, a couple of supplies. You find some um, bottles with some sort of uh, swirling, shimmering red liquid in them, uh, and you also find a rolled up uh, sheaf of paper. Well, I'm going to open up the paper and look at it. Okay. Uh, yeah, you roll up and uh, look at the paper, and you can see here that uh, that you see documents um that sort of it, it basically looks like conversations held through the sending spell um, as sort of like a royal spy for uh, the Bedegars, you would recognize these because all of the entries are like 25 words going back and forth. And you can kind of tell 
that <clears throat> um you can kind of tell that uh she's like workshopping what she's exactly going to say right before she sends the sending spell. And so um, you, it sort of goes over this. It basically reveals what's going on here. Uh, it reveals that uh, Saxton and Caliga um, have been in communication. It reveals that Caliga came here after being exiled from Dalrath for her necromantic practices some time back. Uh, it reveals that actually Lord Saxton was the one who basically suggested that she take over this village um, in the first place. And this appears to all be taking place back before even uh, Lord Bedegar was killed um, and that this has all been going on for, for quite some time now. Uh, and he basically says, you know, I'm going to I have a plan to kill, you know, the Bedegars and take over. And uh, you if you raise an undead army, I will grant you this whole village and just let you be there if you'll support me once I gain control of Bedegar. Um, and so now you see he's calling in his favor to get her to prepare for an attack on Castle Rend and raise as many undead as she can. Um, and that Saxon pa plans to expand his power, eventually attacking Dalrath. Uh, information that you know would probably um, bring Dalrath onto your side. However, you actually already have convinced them. Uh, so, you know, it would shore up that uh, that alliance, but you already kind of have an alliance with Dalrath. Uh, and then um, in return for Kalga's loyalty, Saxton promises um, a whole lot of bodies for the army, um, uh, for her big undead army. Uh, the documents also include Kalga's notes on the star chamber, which you've heard a little bit about, <clears throat> I think from, uh, I guess the dimple offered you some information and you had, but, but you, he, he escaped before you could really collect on that offer. Um, that one halfling dude, you guys rescued. Uh, but you, um, heard a little bit about what goes on there from the intelligence report, I think. Uh, but you get some more information here, which is that, um, she's made notes about Lord Saxon's knights employing sort of, uh, creatures, uh, some gnolls and goblins that are performing a lot of, uh, strange rituals in the star chamber. Um, and it, it seems that Caliga is curious about the source of the Knights of the Roses power and believes that it comes from the world below, which is kind of a plane of existence beneath Orden. Uh, that holds magic, mystery, evil beings. It's akin to the Underdark, kind of, in a uh, standard, like, Feyrun kind of D&D conception. Um, and that's what you find. You find those uh, those notes, and you find those bottles of stuff. Oh, Shanti, this is amazing information we must share. And this necromancer was indeed getting together with uh, Saxton. Apparently, Saxton set her up to have this village, which makes me wonder, what are we supposed to do with all of those undead in the village? I suppose we have to talk to Silas about this. That's a great point, Perdita. What a great find. Good for you. Yes, yeah, so we need to share these papers, and then we need someone to, who, not me. Do you know? Can you tell what is in these vials? I can try. Uh, it's not really something I'm super great at. That might be more Silas's area. I think we have to make peace with Silas. He made me so angry, and I was embarrassed. I could have killed him. Oh, and I'm we so need him sorry. too badly for that. I'm sorry that he embarrassed you, but I know that it was just a poorly timed joke on his part, but still, it doesn't change it. Well, you are so kind to take up for him and make me feel better. Thank you, Shanti. You are a true friend. Anytime. Do you want to go take all that upstairs and well, make now, peace? Isn't there one more? Perhaps we should go down to the first level, too, and just sort of be sure what's happening down there. Surely the others will come down behind us. Sounds good to me. Okay. Uh, so you guys go back on down to the first floor. <clears throat> yep. I was definitely uh, interested in snooping the fireplace. Sure. Uh, and in the meantime, um, 
Silas, Solomon, Enna, and Roz, who are all upstairs. Uh, w- while they're sort of doing that investigation, um, you guys have dissolved this body and found the stuff that you found. What else do you do? <clears throat> well, really, is there anything more to do? Um... Roz is going to hold an action until everyone is outside the tower. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll I'll use the tech magic and just go through like all the books that I can, just yeah. kind of ripping stuff open. Nothing. Nothing. Sure. Yeah. Nothing. Uh, you you look at the rest of this. Uh, no, the you don't see anything else magical here. Uh, you've got the spell book off her body. You've got uh, the cloak. Um, nothing else here. I think uh, is outright magical. Now that you've dissolved her uh, corpse, so. Yeah, then I think we go figure out yeah. where we're at. Yeah, Solomon's going to head to the first floor. Okay. I'll follow. Okay. Um, are you headed with them, Anna, or are you sticking with Roz? Yeah, I'll go with them. Well, Roz is still on the roof, but yeah. Oh, yeah, Roz is on the roof. That's right. Okay, so you guys go down to the second floor. Uh, you see that the chest has been opened, but you don't see... Uh, Perdita and Shanty, uh, but you guys were headed down to the first floor anyway, right? So uh, you guys make your way down to <laughs> the first floor. Uh, while they're coming down the stairs, Shanty and Perdita, you have time t- for whatever you were planning to do here. Cool, Beans. Uh, I wanted to investigate the fireplace if I could, see if there's okay. anything like loose sure. stones or anything like that. Yeah, go ahead. Got a 15. 15, yeah. As you look around, uh, you can tell the fireplace has not been used in probably years. Um, okay. It has, like, weeds growing up and stuff, uh, given that this place is basically exposed to the elements. And you don't get the sense that Caliga really, like, was a terribly efficient housekeeper. Much more important things uh, going on uh, with all the undead. Being undead didn't really experience a lot of, uh, you know, un- discomfort from the <laughs> elements, let's say, uh, or need to eat or sleep. So, um, yeah, you look through the fireplace. Uh, unfortunately, no secret passages. It hasn't really been used in a long time. Uh, and I'll let that investigation carry to the rest of the room. Uh, aside from the suits of armor, which you guys have already killed, um, there is pretty much nothing else of much interest here. So there's some, like, moldering and moldy, you know, uh, furniture, um, you know, a warped table, some a rug and some chairs with like rotting upholstery and stuff, but uh, nothing else terribly um, of interest. Cool. Beans. As, as we're coming down the stairs, does the tech magic give me anything? No, it does not. Uh, you, fa- no. I think they found everything that was in the second floor as well. Why uh, shanties next to the fireplace. Uh, Solomon's going to haphazardly wander up to it. And he's going to be like, uh, so, uh, I apologize that I uh, murdered those uh, undead, and he's gonna kind of be awkward about it. Oh no, no, no! You don't, you don't need to apologize to me. We're not, we're not the same. Those undead and I, all uh, good. I, uh, I'm able to recognize the use of necromancy, but I'm not quite for sure how to tell the difference i don't know i feel like shanty's also going to be awkward because i don't know uh hasn't really had a whole lot of interactions with paladins up until recently uh so i think she's going to be like i mean i won't ever attack you with anything most likely we cool yeah, I I don't uh, see uh, any uh, malicious intention coming from you, so I think I think we're on good terms. Okie dokie. How about a compromise? I will most likely be creating undead at some point that will be helping us, and they will also not attack us. So if you don't attack them, then I I won't have anyone attack anyone in our party. Of course, I wouldn't do that anyway, but just don't attack my zombies, okay? Understood, and Solomon kind of reaches out for a handshake, but he's he's not quite for sure if that's the proper, like, good gesture. Shanty's not either, but I guess she'll she'll reach out and she'll take it. 
Excellent. On contact, you both burst into flame and die. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> well done. That's about right. <sighs> okay. Uh, yeah, so you guys have invested every- investigated everything on the first floor. Um, and uh, you have found... Uh, if you want to just go ahead and identify what's in those potions, uh, just to sort of hand wave that, um, it is three potions of... Hang on, I'll tell you in a second. Three potions of greater healing. And, oh, I'm sorry, there also were 500 gold pieces in there. My bad. So, 500 gold pieces and three potions of greater healing to your loot. You guys can disseminate those uh, next time we play, uh, because we are right at our stopping time here, folks. Uh, So there may be some RP and stuff left that needs to happen. Mending fences with Silenus and Perdita and whatnot. Who knows? Uh, We are going to hold all of that until next time. Um, so I'm not necessarily going to say that we already go back to Castle Rand in case you want to do any scenes here before you leave and deal, try and deal with any of the stuff about the undead or anything like that. Um, we'll handle all that next time. Um, but for the meantime, we are going to go ahead and call our session there today. So I uh, hope everyone had a good time. We had some truly unbelievable stuff happen in that combat. The, I don't, I've never seen anything like that in my life. Just, Just absolutely wild. fuck that necromancer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> anyway, folks, uh, before we do, I think I, we're going to go raid Vincent Page today. Uh, I just feel like it. I haven't, we haven't raided him in a while from this channel. Uh, so we're going to do that. <clears throat> uh, he is playing Legend of Zelda Twilight Princess. But before we do all that, we're going to go around one more time and remind you guys who we are and where we can be found on the internet. If indeed we can be found on the internet, starting with, of course, the bonus mom. Hi, I'm Bonus Mom, and tonight I play Perdita, the tabaxi rogue, and I'm ending the adventure tonight, still feeling a little strange, and well, I have to make peace with Silas, I think. But you can find me in a lot of different places. I TikTok Monday to Friday about 9.30 in the morning. I hang out in our Bonus Mom's Tavern on Discord. I do podcasts, and this will become a podcast, and this Sunday at... um. 4.30 in the afternoon Eastern Time, Nerdy Teacher and I are going to build a better barbarian with the help of our chat. And Tuesday night in our Bonus Moms chat at 7.30 p.m., we are going to talk about uh, what it's like when you play your first D&D adventure. We'll be recapping a new adventure that happened tonight at the same time we were playing our adventure with mostly all new players. So that should be fascinating uh, conversation. Please join us in bonus mom's tavern on discord. And we hope to see you Sunday and Tuesday. I can't help myself. You're going to call that uh, build a barbarian or no build a barbarian. I love it. Uh, Yes, I think we probably will. Uh, uh, Sorry about that. Uh, Puns aside, Kyla, Sorry, I'm still stuck on build a bear barian. Um, hi, I'm Kyla. I play Shanty, um, our uh, water genasi druid and bard. And uh, at least three of my cats made their way into stream this evening. So mm-hmm. glad you got to meet them. I can be found lots of places on the internet under Kaitu D2. And thanks for hanging out. Excellent. Daniel. Yeah, guys, I'm Daniel. I can be found on the Bonus Bomb Tavern pretty much anywhere. So if you need yeah. me, at me. Uh, as for the insane amount of crits, it just happens. Don't ask me how, how I got it that way. I don't know what I did, but anyways, y'all have a great night. Truly unreal. Again, it, we did the math off stream. I don't think I said this on stream. It's like a one in 8,000 chance of getting three nat 20s like that. It's absolutely unreal. Uh, although I guess there were, were some, there was one attack on the two attacks on that other vampire in the middle, regardless, uh, beast. Hey folks, I'm Beast. I played Razi Skurs. And I am very grateful that you hung out and watched us today. And I could be found on Bonus Mom's Tavern, the Discord, uh, and here on the live streams. Come hang out again. We'd love to see you. Huzzah, uh, Jesse. Yeah. Um, while Sil- or Solomon got the kill, I do think Silas at least got the assist. Um <laughs> <laughs> But uh, no, that was that was awesome. And um, yeah, can't wait for two weeks from now. We'll see you then. Yeah. Uh, Excellent. And Taylor. I'm Taylor. I played Enna. And thank you all for such a great session tonight. That was absolutely insane. And it's so great to be back. (laughs) Excellent. Yeah. Uh, Great time. Lots of fun. Um, 
And uh, yeah, so I'm Pixel. I, I was your GM this evening. Uh, thanks to all of our players for uh, coming back and being part of the game in the new year. Super exciting and fun. Um, and uh, I run games here on Ages of Vinor. Um, as I said before, we are probably looking into finishing up the two campaigns that we currently have on. So we have Region of Betagar one week. We have uh, Curse of Strahd the next week. We'll keep alternating those two campaigns. I expect this one will wrap up before Curse of Strahd, at which point I will be looking into trying out a new system and running something. I don't know. It may just be one shots for a while while I try stuff. We may jump into a full on campaign. Who knows? Hard to say. Uh, but we certainly will be doing that uh, in response to all this OGL stuff. We'll be looking for something. Uh, that we can run on stream that'll be good um and uh, i don't know what we'll run um if you have recommendations hit me up in the uh bonus ones tavern discord which you have a link to in chat there and will be in the description of this podcast and video uh or in the link tree in the description of the podcast and video either way um i also do hammer and pixel on twitch that is my other twitch channel i know it's weird that i have two but i like to keep the things separate um because we play video games and sometimes talk about Spicy stuff, uh, including this OGL stuff. If you want to talk more about that, um, please come find me because I would love to. <laughs> we'll rant about it for a good long while. Uh, anyway, so um, thanks for hanging out, everybody. It truly means a lot that you guys are um, hanging out with us for all these uh, crazy adventures that we have. And as always, uh, I want you to do me a favor uh, because until the next time we see you, I would like you to be kinder to yourself than you think you deserve because I promise that um, you you don't know how much kindness you deserve, uh, and it is more than what you think. So, uh, thank you everybody for hanging out, and we will catch you all next time. Uh, next session should be on the 27th, barring some unforeseen circumstances. So, thanks everybody. Bye! Let me tell a tale of a world where heroes walk among us fighting through the darkness left by monsters and by selfish men, a tale of glory rents us under sacrifice and battles lost. Our heroes know not what awaits them and still they can. Sing a song of a family forged by trials and woe. On their own they falter, but together.